high school reunion? Sorry, can't. Planetary obligations. Unfortunate bridesmaid's dress. Unfortunately, you promised the climate you'd buy more vintage. Chauffeuring teens? The Earth really needs them to hoof it. The environment is always the best excuse. Find your out and opt in to cutting carbon. Just visit theenvironmentexcuse.org. Brought to you by Wild Aid. News Talk 1560 AM, 94.1 FM, KTUI Sullivan. It's 6 o'clock. Good morning. This is KTUI Radio, beginning a new day of broadcasting. KTUI is owned and operated by Merrimack Area Broadcasting, LLC of Sullivan, Missouri. Broadcast facilities are located at 900 Elmont Road in Sullivan. KTUI is authorized by the Federal Communications Commission to operate on an assigned frequency of 1560 kilohertz on the AM band and K231CP, an FM translator frequency of 94.1 megahertz. The assigned power for KTUI AM is 1000 watts and the power for the FM translator is 250 watts. We invite you to tune in daily to AM 1560 or 94.1 FM for the latest news, weather, and information. And now the U.S. Coast Guard Band with our national anthem. This is by the way. Someone once observed that God will not look you over for medals, degrees, or diplomas, but for scars. God's gifts of faith and hope are often seen most clearly when we face trials and hardship, yet our scars cannot compare to the scars of Jesus Christ, whose death on the cross we remember on this Good Friday. That death assured us of a time and place without even the threat of scars. It's not achievements and successes that will ultimately bring us eternal peace and happiness, but rather the Savior, whose scars won for us salvation. Thanks, Lord, for going the way of the cross for us. This is by the way. And a good Friday morning. It is Good Friday, and it's also a Red Friday. Remember, everyone deployed. Bobby D. with you here on uh, KTUI 1560 AM Sullivan, the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio. Uh, we'll get to the uh, weather information here in just a second. First off, though, I want to wish a happy birthday to Faye Hicks. Chris Zenkowski, Michelle Parks, they're all celebrating birthdays today. Uh, Lyle Quast will be 63 on Saturday. Jared Dace will also have a birthday on Saturday. On Sunday, Delyn Martin, Keith Zenkowski, Tracy Franklin, and Tony Shaw are celebrating birthdays. Uh, one anniversary for the weekend, and that would be Matt and Shelly Tolliver celebrating their 34th anniversary on Sunday. Coming up today, little John Mike McCullough, I think, are going to be with me at 7.30 and 8.30 today. And after the for sale show at around 9.10, we'll uh, get into some community bulletin board notes. 
Here's a check of your weather. We'll be back with the weather extremes after this. From the KTUI Weather Bug Weather Center, for this morning, a clear sky, a sunny, breezy day today. The high temperature is 74, winds gusting to 30 miles per hour. Partly cloudy and breezy with an isolated shower tonight, low 54, winds gusting to 30 miles per hour. Partly sunny sky Saturday, the high 74. Partly sunny Sunday, maybe a shower or thunderstorm, the high 80. Monday is going to be a cloudy to partly sunny day, showers likely, and maybe a thunderstorm. For KTUI, I'm meteorologist Jim Rinaldi. Thank you very much, Jim. 48 degrees here at the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio. It is 47 at the Sullivan Regional Airport. Uh, our weather information for the day, a sunrise at 6.54 this morning with sunset at 7.25. We pick up three additional minutes of day length. We're up to 12 hours and 31 minutes for today. And in our weather extremes, our record high temperature for this date on March the 29th, back in 1963, we got up to 88 degrees. The record low in 1970, it dropped off to 21. The lowest high temperature for this date occurred in 1975 when it only got to 37 degrees for a high. And the highest low temperature recorded was back in 1910 when it only got down to 63 degrees. That's the weather extremes, and uh, time now for us to get into our news. We'll start things off with news from the USA Radio Network. USA News, I'm Tim Berg. Former President Donald Trump is calling the death of an NYPD officer a sad event. Police officer Jonathan Diller was killed and shot Monday during a traffic stop in Queens by an illegal immigrant. Trump attending Officer Diller's wake on Long Island Thursday. The only thing we can say is maybe something is going to be learned. We've got to toughen it up. We've got to strengthen it up. This should never be allowed. Things like this shouldn't take place and to take place so often. President Biden also in the Empire State, although President Biden in New York, along with former presidents Barack Obama and Bill Clinton, to hold a fundraiser with Lizzo and other celebrities. Four people are dead and five injured in northern Illinois following a stabbing spree. Rockford, Illinois Police Chief Carla Red mourns the impact on the community. With everything that transpired, our community is hurting because of the senseless act of violence that took place. Immigration and Customs Enforcement officials are speaking to the media about a recent 12-day nationwide effort related to their enforcement and removal operations. It targeted a number of cities, including Boston, Seattle, and Washington, D.C. Acting ICE Director P.J. Lichtner says that maintaining the safety of Americans is the goal. Like our local law enforcement partners, all we want to do is keep the American public safe. Although we're always mission ready and capable of conducting large-scale operations like this one, it's better all around when law enforcement agencies honor our detainers to keep people like the 216 arrested in this operation off our streets. A federal judge on Thursday sentenced Sam Bankman freed to 25 years in prison for leading one of the biggest financial scandals in American history. The judge handing down the sentence almost five months after a jury found Bankman free guilty of orchestrating a massive fraud centered on his crypto empire. This is USA News. The inventor and CEO of MyPillow is always looking for ways to solve everyday problems. Have you ever picked up a towel set because it felt really soft in the store, but then when you go to use it, it's not very absorbent? It's basically a towel that's leaving you out to dry. That's why MyPillow has developed the MyPillow towels. Towels that work. I know, it's mind-blowing. Towels that actually dry you. The six-piece towel set includes two bath towels, two hand towels, and two washcloths. They come in a variety of colors, and right now you can receive a six-piece set for only $39.98 with promo code USA. Go to MyPillow.com right now and click on the radio listener special. MyPillow products come with a 10-year warranty and they have a 60-day money-back guarantee. To receive this amazing offer on the six-piece set of MyPillow towels, just go to MyPillow.com. Click on the radio listener special and enter promo code USA or call 800-951-8175. That's MyPillow.com, promo code USA. The Georgia election fraud case against former President Donald Trump and a group of alleged co-conspirators is back in a Fulton County courtroom on Thursday for a pretrial hearing. Defense attorney Steve Sato spoke in support of the former president. He argued Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election were political speech, which falls under the First Amendment. 
I don't think there's any question that statements, comments, speech, expressive conduct that deals with campaigning or elections has always been found to be at the zenith. The State Department is offering a big reward after a ransomware group hacked into United Healthcare. USA's Ryan Daniels has the story. It happened back in February. The group managed to hack into a subsidiary that manages payment systems for most of the country's hospitals. This week, the State Department said they're offering a $10 million reward for information that would lead to the identification or location of those involved in the cyber attack. The House will send the articles of impeachment against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas to the Senate next month. House Republicans impeached Mayorkas last month for his handling of the U.S.-Mexico border. Speaker Mike Johnson saying the articles will be sent to the upper chamber on April 10th. Mayorkas is the first cabinet secretary to be impeached in almost 150 years. For USA News, I'm Tim Berg. Do you have a story to tell? Bring your story to life with audiobooks. Great stories deserve great storytelling. Audiobook Network provides professional voice actors and full production services for every author's manuscript. From narration, production, and editing to distribution, promotion, and sales, Audiobook Network handles everything. If you have a print book, ebook, or even a manuscript, call Audiobook Network now and get our free audiobook guide. 800 734 1229. 800 734 1229. You deserve extraordinary care close to home. From primary care to advanced specialties right here in Sullivan and access to all that BJC Healthcare has to offer. We're here to provide the care you need. Missouri Baptist Sullivan Hospital and BJC Healthcare. Care that is comprehensive, coordinated, and completely about you. Learn more at MissouriBaptistSullivan.org. Missouri Net News, I'm Marshall Griffin. A funeral service is set for today for a University of Missouri student who was found dead last week in Nashville. Family and friends will gather in Springfield today to say farewell to 22-year-old Riley Strain. Strain, who was on a trip to Nashville with his fraternity friends, went missing after being separated from them on the way back to their hotel. The Missouri Senate has given preliminary approval to a bill that would create a prescribed pediatric extended care center license for providers that offer care to children with complex medical needs. Under the bill, these services require continuous care for at least four hours a day. A provision from Republican Bill Eichel would limit the scope of authority that the Department of Health has to make rules and regulations for the license. We're giving uh, authority to DHSS to inspect the conditions of the places in which the applicant operates, uh, including records, premises, and children to be served. My concern was that we were going to be giving DHSS direct access to children, potentially without uh, the presence of their parents. Services that these care centers provide could include skilled nursing, personal care, nutritional and developmental assessment, and speech, physical and occupational therapy. The bill requires one more vote from the Senate before moving to the House. Missouri House leaders are proposing nearly $730 million be spent on making improvements to I-44, the longest interstate highway in the Show Me State. They would include expanding the highway to six lanes in and around Springfield, Rolla, and Joplin. Republican State Rep Don Mayhew says upgrades to I-44 are especially needed to improve truck traffic. I mean, just from a freight standpoint alone, uh, MoDOT's own study shows that I-44 carries about eight and a half times the freight tonnage that I-70 does. I-44 is a direct connection to the Long Beach Port facility, which I think, if I remember correctly, handles about 80 percent of the international trade. The financial package to improve I-44 is included in the Missouri House's proposed budget for next year. This is Missouri Net. I know I need to pay attention to my health, but I just can't seem to find the time. Between rushing to work and taking care of the kids, there's not much time left over for me. So I decided to start small by eating more fruits and vegetables and being more active. And then I got the family to make some changes, too. We started by keeping a bowl of fresh fruit on the counter, and I limit the amount of sweet snacks I keep in the house. I've also found some creative ways to add more vegetables to our meals. We're taking more walks, and on the weekends, we head down to the pool at the rec center. It doesn't happen every day, but it does happen. You don't have to change your entire life to be healthier. Just make some simple changes and include your family. You'll see how easy and fun it can be. 
you can make a difference. Eat smart, play hard, and when you do, your kids will too. A challenge from USDA. To help low-income Missourians with hearing loss gain their hearing again is halfway to the legislative finish line. Elisa Nelson reports. Current Missouri law allows Medicaid payments to cover the cost of hearing aids for eligible low-income children, pregnant women, and visually impaired people. The Missouri House of Representatives has passed a bill that would expand coverage to include hearing aids and cochlear implants for all eligible low-income residents. Representative Cameron Parker, a Republican from Southeast Missouri's Campbell, is sponsoring the bill. It's the state Senate's turn to take a look at the legislation. Elisa Nelson, Missouri Net. A bill designed to toughen penalties against suspects in police chases is on its way to the Missouri Senate. The House on Wednesday passed the so-called Valentine's Law, which would make it a Class D felony to recklessly flee from or detain law enforcement using a motor vehicle. And Missouri has seen a dramatic decrease in drought conditions thanks to the heavy rains that soaked the state. About 76% of the state is experiencing dry conditions with no areas of extreme drought. This is Missouri Net. Do you have a guy... Like your dad or grandpa had a guy. Something broke around the house you couldn't fix, Gramps would say, call my guy. He probably drove an old blue pickup, big tool chest in the back, decades of calluses on strong hands, name on his shirt like Don or Ed or Buddy. He just always seemed to know the best way to fix any problem. That's why grandpa trusted him. There's not many of those guys around today, and no wonder, between taxes and technology, insurance and licensing, it's hard to be that guy and be competitive. Well, that's why this company started. We love what we do, and we still want to be that guy. Independent technicians, generations of combined experience, all joined together as one powerful team. Strength in numbers, you know? If you're ever stuck with a broken furnace or air conditioner, now you've got a guy. We're Level 9, heating and cooling. Level 9, HVAC.com. Looking at local news from the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio on this Friday, the Missouri State Highway Patrol reported an arrest at 10.16 p.m. Thursday in Crawford County. 39-year-old Joseph M. Yarrow of Cuba was arrested on patrol charge of DWI. He was processed and released. At 6.06 p.m. Thursday in Franklin County, 26-year-old Danny I. Lopez Hernandez of St. Charles was arrested on a patrol charge for driving while intoxicated. He was taken to the Franklin County Adult Detention Facility and placed on 12-hour hold. At 1.50 a.m. Thursday in Boone County, 23-year-old Nicholas J. Reeves of Sullivan was arrested for driving while intoxicated. He was released on summons. The Franklin County Government Center, County Administrative Offices, Historic Courthouse, Health Department, and Highway Department will be closed today in observance of Good Friday. The Sheriff's Department will remain open as they are 24 hours every day. Most city, and county, and state offices and uh, most federal offices are closed today for the Good Friday holiday. Some things coming up around the area today. The Missouri Baptist Solvent Hospital Auxiliary having a bake sale fundraiser from 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. today. Tables are located near the outpatient entrance. It's cash or credit only. Serve Pro of Franklin County sponsoring an American Red Cross blood drive in the training room at number 2 Truman Court in Union. That will run from 1 until 5 p.m. today. You can visit redcrossblood.org, enter SERVPRO, S-E-R-V-P-R-O, to schedule an appointment. The second annual Chief Mason Griffith Easter Parade going on in Rosebud, sponsored by the Rosebud Community Park Association and the Police Department. That will get underway at 5.30 this evening. Parade lineup will be at 4.30 at the Rosebud RV Park facing Rosebud Avenue. The parade will start at 5.30. Bring out the kids, uh, make sure they bring an Easter basket to load up on candy. They'll have a candy cannon at 6.30 after the parade. You're invited to bring your groups, decorated vehicles, floats, UTVs, first responder vehicles, etc. to join the fun. Please bring your own candy to throw out, no plastic eggs. The famous park fish fry will be going on from 4 till 7 p.m. as well, and they are accepting donations for the event. Some church services around the area tonight. New Testament Baptist Church in Sullivan having Good Friday services at 7 o'clock tonight at the church. They're located at 962 North Church Street in Sullivan. And they're going to have uh, Sunday morning services with a choir performance at 10, followed by an Easter egg hunt at the church. 
Temple Baptist Church in Sullivan having a Good Friday worship service at 7 o'clock tonight. All are invited. The Victorian Place of Cuba is sponsoring a benefit adult after dark Easter egg hunt tonight. Food and drinks are provided in exchange for a donation to Longest Day, which is an organization that raises funds and awareness for the care, support, and research efforts of the Alzheimer's Association. Food will be served starting at 6. The egg hunt should begin after dark at about 7.30. Make sure you bring your flashlights, headlamps, or phones. MoDOT has scheduled road work for Highway 28 in the Owensville area. Milling transitions began last night by Capital Paving. Should be complete around April 1st. After that, the paving work should start. They will be working at night, so there will be no daytime closures, but use caution while driving through those work zones. With the municipal elections coming up next Tuesday, April the 2nd, the Gasconade and Franklin County Courthouses will be open on Saturday for absentee voting. The Franklin County Courthouse at 401 East Main Street, room 100A, will be open from 8 a.m. until 12 noon. The Gasconade County Courthouse at 119 East 1st Street is open from 8 until 1.30. It will all be open during regular hours on Monday for absentee voting. In Crawford County, you must vote at the Crawford County Courthouse and in Washington County as well. Hours there are 8 to 4.30, and they'll be doing that on Monday. Attention Sullivan School District parents, if you have a child that will be five years of age before July 31st of this year, uh, you are requested to come to the Sullivan Primary School on April 4th for kindergarten registration from 7.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. They will need your child's shot record and birth certificate. From the parents, they'll need a copy of your driver's license and proof of residency, such as an electric bill or rental agreement. If you have any questions, you can call the Sullivan Primary School office at 573-468-5171, option 4. The St. Clair R13 Board of Education pleased to announce that Mrs. Samantha Tottisman has been hired as the new Edgar Murray Elementary School Assistant Principal. Congratulations to Mrs. Tottisman as she continues her commitment to excellence in education. The Sullivan City Council will be meeting next Tuesday at 7 o'clock at City Hall, 210 West Washington. Meeting will come to order at 7 o'clock. Under committee reports, Planning and Zoning has scheduled a public hearing for April the 9th for an annexation proposal at 1233 Thatcher Road. We'll also have a report from the Board of Adjustment. There are no ordinances on the agenda at this time. There is a closed session scheduled for real estate litigation, personnel, and contractual negotiations. The public is invited to attend the open meeting 7 o'clock next Tuesday, April 2nd at Sullivan City Hall, 210 West Washington. That's a look at your local reported news from the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio on this Friday. Have a great weekend, everybody. This is Bobby D. Your 401k is likely one of your most important assets, but it's only one part of a comprehensive retirement strategy. Edward Jones can help you understand how your retirement assets fit into your entire retirement picture so you can work toward meeting your unique retirement goals. Contact me, Donnie Greenwald, your Sullivan Edward Jones Financial Advisor at number 10 First Community Plaza in Sullivan. Edward Jones, member SIPC. New Testament Baptist Church in Sullivan is starting a new addiction recovery ministry called Life Issues. It's a biblical approach to the 12 steps, bringing scriptural principles into personal focus and making them come alive for transformational living. Whether you struggle with addictions, food, depression, anxiety, or relationships, you'll be encouraged to see how others have found a new way of life with hope for the future through this program. Life Issues will meet weekly on Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. at New Testament Baptist Church. You're not alone. To find out more, contact New Testament Baptist Church at 573-468-3334. In recent funeral announcements, Frances Ann Bell passed away Sunday, March 24th in St. Peter's at the age of 84. Funeral services will be held at 11 o'clock this morning at the Concordia Lutheran Church in Bourbon. In Earnment will follow at Bourbon Cemetery. Cremation has taken place. A visitation will be held from 9.30 this morning until services at 11 at the church. All arrangements for Francis Bell are under the care of the Eaton Funeral Home and Cremation Center of Sullivan. Sharon Lee Bender, nay Skelton of St. Clair, passed away Saturday, March 23rd at the age of 80. Funeral services will be held at 1 o'clock this afternoon at the Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair with burial in Crespi Memorial Park in St. Clair. Visitation will be held from 10 a.m. until services at 1 p.m. today at the Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair for Sharon Bender. 
Benjamin Adam Bach of Union passed away Monday, March 25th at the age of 37. Funeral services will be held Saturday at 10 a.m. at the Gotten Strader Chapel in Owensville with burial in Countryside Memorial Gardens. Visitation for Benjamin Adam Bach will be held Friday from 4 until 8 p.m. at the Gotten Strader Chapel in Owensville. Peggy J. Bryant of Bourbon passed away Sunday, March 24th in St. Louis at the age of 64. Funeral services will be held at 11 a.m. Saturday at the Oak Hill Free Will Baptist Church of Union. Interment will follow at Smith Cemetery, Nigger Springs. Visitation will be from 9 until 11 a.m. Saturday at the Oak Hill Free Will Baptist Church of Union. Memorial contributions may be made to the American Breast Cancer Society or St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in memory of Peggy Bryant. All arrangements are under the care and direction of the Eaton Funeral Home and Cremation Center of Sullivan. Ralph Willard Dulaney of Cuba passed away at his home on Saturday, March 23rd at the age of 85. The family has chosen cremation as his final disposition. No services will be held at this time. All arrangements for Ralph Willard Dulaney are under the direction of the Hudson Funeral Home in Cuba. The completed funeral announcements with all the survivors will air during our expanded edition of KTUI News at 8 o'clock this morning. Earn 5.51 annual percentage yield on a 7-month CD at Sullivan Bank. Use our CD calculator on SullivanBank.com and see how much you could earn. Experience great rates and a step up in service. We are waiting to greet you with a smile. Annual percentage yield of 5.51 APY is accurate as of December 26, 2023. $1,000 minimal balance required to earn stated APY. Penalty may be imposed for early withdrawal, which will reduce earnings on the account. Interest compounded and credited quarterly. Rate subject to change at any time. Available at all locations. Did you know that Compass Health Network provides pediatric and adult dental services? Best of all, our dental care is designed for everyone. We accept most insurance plans and Medicaid. Plus, we offer a sliding scale fee for those without insurance. From major dental procedures to gentle pediatric dentistry, we've got it all. Call 844-853-8937 or visit compasshealthnetwork.org to find a Compass Health Network dental office near you. Your journey to a better smile begins with us. Book your appointment today. From the KTUI Weather Bug Weather Center for this morning, a clear sky, a sunny, breezy day today. The high temperature is 74, winds gusting to 30 miles per hour. Partly cloudy and breezy with an isolated shower tonight, low 54, winds gusting to 30 miles per hour. Partly sunny sky Saturday, the high 74. Partly sunny Sunday, maybe a shower or thunderstorm, the high 80. Monday is going to be a cloudy to partly sunny day, showers likely and maybe a thunderstorm. For KTUI, I'm meteorologist Jim Rinaldi. Thank you very much, Jim. 48 degrees at the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio, 47 at the Sullivan Regional Airport. Uh, just saw this on X. Um, probably doesn't affect a whole lot of people that can hear me right now, uh, but just plan ahead if you're going west toward Rolla. Uh, eastbound I-44 was closed at mile marker 188 due to an overturned vehicle. All eastbound traffic uh, must exit at uh, Highway 63 in Rolla, uh, exit 186. You're advised to use an alternate route if possible. So that's basically uh, between the Highway 63 exit in Rolla and the uh, Highway V uh, exit there at the uh, the truck stop and the industrial park uh, east of Rolla. So the, that'll be uh, closed down for some time. So you might expect some uh, traffic delays even heading westbound. Uh, you know, folks will slow down going through there. Of course, that's that construction zone anyway, so uh, just kind of plan ahead if you're heading that direction. Happy birthday today to Faye Hicks, Chris Zenkowski, and Michelle Parks. Lyle Quast and Jared Dace have birthdays on Saturday. Delin Martin, Keith Zenkowski, Tracy Franklin, and Tony Shaw have birthdays on Sunday. And on Sunday, Matt and Shelley Tolliver celebrating their 34th wedding anniversary. Coming up next, it's Check of Sports. Looking at sports on this Friday from the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio. The Cardinals opened their regular season on the road yesterday in Los Angeles against the Dodgers. Coming up short in a 7-1 score, here's Ricky Horton and John Rooney with the Redbird Recap. With Ricky Horton, I'm John Rooney. Victor Scott II made his Major League debut, got on on an error, and picked up his first Major League stolen base. Paul Goldschmidt had a 3-for-4 day, unfortunately, 
He had the only hits for the Cardinals as the Dodgers won 7-1. Tyler Glass now pitched very well for the Dodgers in picking up the victory. And the top of the Dodgers lineup, which we all know is going to be good, they were better than good yesterday with Mookie Betts homering, Freddie Freeman homering, and picking up an awful lot of hits, including Otani, who had a good day. But Miles Michaelis just did not have the start he wanted. Tyler Glass now did. Too many walks, too, for the Cardinals pitching staff that actually resulted in runs as well. And one of the bright spots, Matthew Libertor had a very fast eighth inning. And he looked sharp, too, throwing 97 miles an hour and showing his good curveball. We'll be on the air tonight from Dodger Stadium at 8.15. Ricky will have the lineups at 9 o'clock. Zach Thompson will be opposed by Bobby Miller, and we hope you'll join us. The Dodgers won yesterday 7-1. to one. Thank you, John. We'll have that Cardinals game on the air tonight. Pre-game at 8.15, first pitch at 9.20 from Los Angeles. The Blues had a strong third period to come away with a 5-3 win at home over Calgary last night. Here's Alex Ferrario with the Blues recap. Last night, the Blues returned to action in their push for the playoffs in the Western Conference. They took on the Calgary Flames in the first period. It would be Zach Bolduc that picked up the first goal for the Blues, the second of the season for the youngster. But Calgary would tie things up a little less than two minutes later, 1-1. Calgary and before the period would end they capitalized on a power play where the Blues were down by a goal. Then early in the second period Nathan Walker dropped the gloves with Joel Hanley of the Calgary Flames and eight seconds later Jake Neighbors scored to tie things up. Then Pavel Buchnevich would score it on the power play but before the second period would end the Flames would get one back to even it up at three. Then two minutes and four seconds into the third period Brandon Saad would score the 24th goal of the season for him and then Pavel Buchnevich would cap it off with an empty netter as the Blues take down the Flames 5-3. Also in this one, Jordan Bennington stopping 23 of 26 shots and picking up two assists. First goalie since Curtis Joseph in 93 to have two assists in the game. Blues back at it on Saturday against the Sharks. 7 o'clock puck drop, 6.30 pregame skate on the St. Louis Blues Radio Network. Thanks, Alex. We'll have that Blues game on Saturday night on 15.60 a.m. Looking at the college scoreboard from Thursday, number nine Vanderbilt rode a shutout pitching effort to a 3-1 decision over Missouri baseball in the opening contest of the two clubs' three-game Southeastern Conference Series Thursday evening at Vanderbilt. Second-ranked Central Missouri Mules baseball hit six home runs on its way to a 20-10 victory over the Newman Jets in the first of a three-game MIAA series. East Central Baseball dropped a doubleheader at North Central Missouri College on Thursday, losing 2-0 and 8-4. Emporia State Baseball dropped the next inning battle against Central Oklahoma on Thursday night as the Hornets fell 7-6 to the Broncos in Game 1 of their series. T.J. Rockerbomber from Herman won for four with an RBI for Emporia. Mineral Area Baseball swept a twin bill from Metropolitan Community College, 11-10 and 16-8. Missouri S&T Miners set a program record for the most home runs in a single game with eight in Thursday's 25-24 loss to the Illinois Springfield Prairie Stars. Teams combined for 48 hits and 15 home runs. Tommy Reether from Washington was 2-5 for five with a solo homer, two walks and two runs for the Miners. Crowder College overcame a 7-0 deficit, scoring nine runs in the second inning on their way to an 18-7 win over St. Charles Community College yesterday. And Umsel Baseball dropped its series opener at number 21 Maryville, 14-4 in seven innings Thursday afternoon. College Softball, number 12 Missouri, picked up an 11-2 run rule victory over George Mason Thursday at the George Mason Complex. ECC softball fell at MSU West Plains Thursday, 14-0 and 5-4 in a walk-off. Abrea Simmons was the losing pitcher for East Central in Game 1. Lexi Lewis from Washington, 2-2 two two with two stolen bases for the Falcons. In Game 2, Addison Steele struck out 7 in the loss. Avery Little, 1-3 for three with a double, a run scored in an RBI. Peyton Robinson, 1-3 for three with an RBI. And Lewis was 1-2 for two with a walk, a run scored, and two stolen bases. Alexis Funkhauser from Solvin was 2 for 3 with 2 RBI in Game 1, 2 for 3 in the second game for MSU West Plains. Jefferson College Softball took both games of their doubleheader with Mineral Area, 8-0 and 17-6. Number 24 Kansas dropped the first game of a three-game series against number 1 Oklahoma 6-1 last night at home. Looking at the schedule of games for today, Missouri will continue the series at Vanderbilt at 6 o'clock 
Illinois State at Missouri State starting a three-game series at 6.30. Central Missouri and Newman at 2 o'clock. Hannibal LaGrange at Columbia College at 1. East Central will finish up that series at North Central Missouri with a doubleheader at noon. Emporia State at Central Oklahoma at 3. Mineral Area at Metropolitan Community College for a doubleheader at noon. Also at noon, Missouri S&T at Illinois Springfield for two. Moberly Area Community College at Heston College for a twin bill at noon. Eureka College at Principia at 3 o'clock. St. Charles at Crowder for a doubleheader at 1. Jefferson College at St. Louis Community College at 1. It'll be Three Rivers at State Fair for a doubleheader at noon. Umsel at Maryville a doubleheader at 1. And UHSP at William Woods at 6 o'clock. Softball, Missouri at Villanova to finish up their East Coast trip at 9 o'clock this morning. Murray State at Missouri State for two games at 1. Oklahoma at Kansas, 5 o'clock tonight. Lincoln at Northeastern State for two games at 1 o'clock. Lindenwood at Tennessee Tech, a doubleheader at noon. Missouri Baptist at Stevens College for two games at 2 o'clock. Doubleheader for Missouri S&T at Rockhurst at noon. North Central Missouri at State Fair at noon. And Central Baptist at UHSP softball for a doubleheader at 2 o'clock. Outdoor track starting today. It's the SBU Open, Evangel, Missouri S&T, Missouri Southern. The CMU Invite with Font Bond, Hannibal LaGrange, and William Woods. The Washington University Distance Carnival, Font Bond, Maryville, Mineral Area, Missouri Baptist, Missouri S&T are at that, along with Missouri Southern, State Fair, Truman State, and Washburn. Also, the Joey Haynes Invitation on CMO continues today. The Raleigh Relays and Texas Relays for St. Louis University and the uh, Dutch Invitational at Central College in Iowa for Truman State. In college golf today and tomorrow, Font Bond takes on Olivet at Kankakee Elks Golf Course. In the local scoreboard from last night, Sullivan uh, picked up a game against Eldon going on the road, coming up on the short end of a 6-1 decision. The varsity game, Sullivan JV beat Eldon 6-3. Herman taking both games from Silex, 13-3 in varsity, 2-1 in JV. New Haven picked up a win over Wellsville, 14-0. Bell down Dixon, 6-4. Francis Howell JV defeating Washington 4-1. Washington freshman defeated St. Charles West, 14-9. And it was Owensville C-team downing Waynesville, 14-8. Girls soccer, Sullivan with a sweep last night. They beat North County, 4-0 in varsity and 5-0 in JV. They played one half of JV last night. Borgia over Fallon Christian, 3-1 in a varsity matchup. Owensville blanks Dixon, 8 0 in Pacific over Valley Park, 8 0. Liberty defeating Washington, 3 0 in varsity, 5 1 in JV. In spring softball, Conway on top of Bourbon last night, 8 2. High school track from the Lynn Invitational. Local teams in the girls' standings Herman was third, Cuba eighth, Steelville 11th, St. James 12th, and Bell was 13th. On the boys' side, Steelville finishing fifth, Herman seventh, and Cuba tenth. Some of the top finishers in the girls' 100-meter dash, Ashlyn Hughes from Herman was second. In the 200, Riley Maness from Cuba was second. In the 400, Avery Campbell from St. James fifth. And Erica Schutt from Herman, it was eighth. In the girls' 800, Keeley Lane from Herman was third. Kaylee Fulian from Cuba was fifth. Girls' 1600, Amelia Uthlot from Herman fifth. Vanessa Perone of St. James was seventh. In the girls' 3,200 meters, Catherine Strackeljohn from St. James was second. Cadence Basham from Cuba was third. Jocelyn Neal from Herman fourth. And Tajel McDaniel from Bell was seventh. In the girls' 100-meter hurdles, Abby Kreitner from Steelville was seventh. She finished fourth in the girls' 300 hurdles. 4x100 relay, Herman first, Steelville fifth. In the 4x2, Steelville was third, Herman fourth. In the 4x400, Herman first, Cuba sixth, and Steelville eighth. And the 4x800, Cuba second, Steelville fourth, Herman was sixth. In the girls high jump, Hannah Turnbow from Steelville fourth, Jillian Frederick from Herman was eighth. In the pole vault, Ashlyn Hughes from Herman was fifth. Alex Hughes from St. James was eighth in the long jump. Allie Bush, fourth from Herman, and Alex Hughes, eighth from St. James in the girls' triple jump. Shannon Black from Cuba, fifth in the shot put. Aubrey Rembert from Bell, first in the discus. Molly Bailey from Steel Bill was seventh. Shannon Black from Cuba was eighth. Aubrey Rembert from Bell, first in the javelin. Karen Gooden from St. James was second. On the boys' side, in the 100-meter dash, Micah Volner from Cuba was seventh. He was eighth in the 200 meters and seventh in the 400. In the boys' 1,600-meter run, Nolan Kopp from Herman was second. Tandon Baker from Cuba was eighth. In the 3,200, Nathan Menke from Herman was eighth. In the boys' 110-meter hurdles, Gage Harris of Steelville was second. Noah Halbert from Cuba was seventh. In the 300 meters, Landon Rutledge from Steelville was fourth. Noah Halbert from Cuba was fifth. 
Four by 100 meter relay, Herman fourth, Steelville eighth. Four by 200, Steelville fourth, Herman eighth. In the four by 400 meter relay, Herman sixth, Cuba seventh. In the four by 800, Steelville was fourth. Boys high jump, Cameron Brown of Steelville was first, John Hyde of Herman third. Brown was also first in the boys long jump. In the triple jump, Boston Setzer from Steelville was fifth. Boy shot put, Zane Brown of Cuba fourth. Carter Eppel from Herman sixth. Aiden Redkowski from Steelville was eighth. In the discus, Carter Eppel was fifth. And in the javelin, Caden Humphrey from Herman was seventh. Middle school track yesterday at the Bourbon Invitational. Sullivan girls were first, followed by Steelville in second. Cuba third. Bland was fifth. Owensville sixth. Bourbon was eighth. On the boys' side, Sullivan finishing first, Owensville was third, Bland fourth, Cuba fifth, Bourbon seventh, and Steelville was eighth. Top finishers, uh, girls' long jump, Justice Evard from Cuba, and the boys' long jump, Blaze Faye from Cuba, boys' triple jump, Blake Tolliver from Sullivan. In the girls' discus, Jersey Bright from Cuba was first, girls' shot put, Peyton Bray of Sullivan first, in the boys' shot put, John Vandergriff of Cuba took first. Girls 4x800 meter relay, Sullivan 1, Owensville 2. Boys 4x800, Sullivan 1, Bland 2, Bourbon was 4. Girls 100 hurdles, Chloe Grief from Sullivan was 1st and Riley Rulo from Sullivan was 2nd. In the boys 100 hurdles, Ryan Evans from Owensville 1st, Blaze Faye from Cuba was 2nd. Girls 100 meter dash, Justice Savard from Cuba was 1st, Tegan Pullman from Sullivan 2nd. Boys 100, Blaze Faye of Cuba was 2nd, Blake Tolliver of Sullivan 3rd. Girls 4 by 200, Sullivan 1st, Owensville 4th. Boys 4 by 2, Owensville 1st, Sullivan 2nd. Girls 1600 meter run, Karina Broniger from Sullivan 1st. Adelaide Perkins from Steelville was 2nd. In the boys 1600, Colton Hazelwood of Bland was 2nd. Jackson Prater of Bland was 4th. Girls 4 by 100, Sullivan 2nd, Owensville 3rd. Boys 4 by 1, Owensville 2nd, and Sullivan 3rd. Girls 400 meter dash, Natalie Lansford of Bland was 1st. Zoe Camden from Bland was 2nd. In the boys, 400, Malachi Friedendahl from Bland was first, Carson Price of Sullivan second. Girls, 800, Ella Basham from Cuba first, Abby Schluter from Steelville was second. In the boys, 800, David Skaggs of Bland was first, Colin Heyman from Sullivan was second. In the girls, 200, Justice Savard from Cuba was first, Ellie Crump of Sullivan second. Boys 200, Blaze Fay of Cuba second, Lucas Westbrook of Sullivan was fourth. Girls 4x4, four four, Sullivan first and Bland second. And the boys 4x4, four four, Bland first, Sullivan was second. Schedule of games for today in baseball, Cuba will be at Vienna at 4.30, North Point at Washington Varsity only at 4.30, Stillville playing in the Bismarck Tournament today and tomorrow. High school track, Sullivan, Borgia, Owensville, Pacific, St. Clair, Union and others will be at the Washington Pentathlon tomorrow. Sports on the air, we have Cardinals baseball. They'll be coming away from Los Angeles, taking on the Dodgers game two of the season. 8-15 pregame, 9-21st pitch. You'll hear it on 102.1 KTUI-FM. That's your look at sports from the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio on this Friday. Have a great weekend, everybody. This is Bobby D. Come join us at our Seidenstruger Nobi Partners Spring Open House April 5th and 6th at our Union dealership and get in the yellow seat. We have event-only specials and you can save big on our John Deere compact tractors. Take advantage of 0% financing for 84 months with zero down. Plus save up to an additional $2,500 on model year 23 compact tractors. Visit SNPartners.com for more information. Offer valid through 4-6-2024. Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. A solid day for direct cash cattle trade and cash hogs close higher. Good morning, I'm Megan Grabner with the Brownfield Livestock Market Report. There was a light to moderate direct cash cattle trade that developed Thursday afternoon. Deals in the south are marked at $186 live. That's a dollar higher than Wednesday's business, but $2 below the previous week's weighted averages. Dress deals are marked at $299 to $300, 2 to $3 lower than the prior week's weighted average basis. At the Mitchell Livestock Auction in South Dakota, feeder steers 900 to 1,000 pounds were steady to $5 higher. Feeder heifers 800 to 900 pounds were steady to $1 higher. There was a much higher undertone noted on light heifers. The USDA says the offering featured many load lots and one consigner of 750 feeders. Demand was very good. Medium and large one feeder steers 706 to 740 pounds brought 270 to 270 10. Feeder steers 965 to 969 pounds brought 226.75 to 227.75. Medium and large one feeder heifer 614 to 696 pounds brought 281 to 296 dollars. 
Box B closed mixed with light to moderate demand for solid offerings. Choice down 22 cents at 308.36. Select closed 274 higher at 301.17. Estimated cattle slaughter was 116,000 head, down 1,000 on the week and down more than 9,000 on the year. Cash hogs closed higher with a moderate negotiated run. Processors got a little more aggressive in their procurement efforts Thursday afternoon and bid up to move needed numbers. Global demand continues to be a bright spot for the hog market, and this past week was no exception. As net export sales had a marketing year high and were up 64% on the previous week and up 74% from the prior four-week average, the industry continues to monitor the availability of market-ready hogs and hog weights. Barrows and Guilds at the National Daily Direct closed 221 higher with a weighted average of 81.47. The Iowa Minnesota was up $1.41 with a weighted average of 80.27. And the Western Corn Belt closed at dollar seventy-five higher, with a weighted average of eighty ninety-six. Pork values closed higher, up forty-six cents at ninety-four fifty-two. Butts, loins, and hams were higher, and estimated hog slaughter was four hundred eighty-nine thousand head, down a thousand on the week, and up about eleven thousand on the year. At the CME, live cattle were up, and feeders were mostly higher, watching direct business unfold. And lean hog futures closed mixed ahead of the USDA's quarterly hogs and pigs report. The near-term numbers are neutral to bearish with the potential for some long-term support. I'm Megan Grebner for Brownfield. Hi, I'm Bill Pollack, host of Show Me Today. We listened to you, Missouri, and brought you a daily radio show that brings you captivating stories of people, places, and topics around our state. What was lacking in all these years before this was someone with the desire. Now, if you miss a segment or entire show, just download our podcast. A lot of people don't realize that. Subscribe to Show Me Today on Apple or wherever you find your favorite podcasts and add us to your list. Show me today. Sharpen Herbicide takes your burn down up a notch, going from burn down to three to five times faster burn down. From strict tank mix limitations to awesome tank mix compatibility. And from controlling some weeds to controlling more than 80 of the toughest broadleaf weeds. Including mare's tail. Including mare's tail. Because if it can't control mare's tail, it's pretty much just fancy water. So sharpen up your burn down. With Sharpen Herbicide. Powered by Kixor Technology from BASF. Always read and follow Label Direct. Have disposable coveralls and foot covers on the farm. Hi, I'm Jody Henke. They may not be fashionable, but they reduce the risk of spreading disease as you're living the country life. Living the country life. Ideas and inspiration for your place in the country. You can find more information on today's topic and from previous shows by visiting us online at livingthecountrylife.com. We'll return to the show after these messages. Whenever you're online, Living the Country Life is there too. Like us on Facebook and exchange tips and ideas with people who share your love for the country way of life. Follow us on Twitter at Small Farming for timely news and information. You can also find us on Instagram and Pinterest. See the latest inspired shot from our readers or add a garden tip to your boards. Living the Country Life has all the ideas for your home acreage. Visit us online at livingthecountrylife.com and find us on social media. If you're looking for new ideas for what to do around your place in the country, register for the Living the Country Life newsletter. Once a week, you'll receive helpful tips in your inbox on a wide variety of seasonal and timely topics, along with so much more. Living the Country Life is for all those people who love to live in the country. Sign up for your free newsletter today by visiting livingthecountrylife.com. When traveling from one farm to another, it's important for livestock producers and farm visitors to think about the health and safety of farm animals. Bacteria and viruses that cause infectious diseases in livestock can hitch a ride on your boots, car tires, and your hands. Biosecurity that includes wearing disposable clothing helps reduce the spread of disease from one farm to another. Covering up can also protect you from pathogens that could make humans sick. Kevin Heitland is a sales manager with AgriPro Enterprises of Iowa. He says the two most important items are coveralls and foot protection. Put on a fresh layer every time you walk into an animal facility. Just to avoid any type of chance of any kind of disease transfer from one building to the next. It's even important to wear some foot protection between one building to the next and then dispose of it before you go all the way in, you know, your entry points. Or even getting into your vehicle, you know, walk into your vehicle and, and driving to the next farm. 
Always have your protective garments on hand and easily accessible. Also consider outfitting the people who visit your farm on a regular basis. You should, you know, even have foot protection in your vehicle and you're traveling from site to site. So that way you can put them on. Feed truck drivers, they should have them so they can put a new pair on when they come on your farm with a load of feed. And there should be a place for them to dispose of them there on the farm so they don't have to take them back in the truck and transfer it that way as well. Once disposable cover-ups are worn, they can be incinerated or tossed in the trash. Learn more on how to dress for biosecurity at livingthecountrylife.com. I'll see you in the country. Living the Country Life. Ideas and inspiration for your place in the country. You can find more information on today's topic, share your tips, and post photos by visiting us online at livingthecountrylife.com. From the KTUI Weatherbug Weather Center for this morning, a clear sky, a sunny, breezy day today. The high temperature is 74, winds gusting to 30 miles per hour. Partly cloudy and breezy with an isolated shower tonight, low 54, winds gusting to 30 miles per hour. Partly sunny sky Saturday, the high 74. Partly sunny Sunday, maybe a shower or thunderstorm, the high 80. Monday is going to be a cloudy to partly sunny day, showers likely, and maybe a thunderstorm. For KTUI, I'm meteorologist Jim Rinaldi. Thank you, Jim. 48 degrees at the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio. 47 at the Sullivan Regional Airport. Happy birthday today, Faye Hicks, Chris Zenkowski, and Michelle Parks. Saturday, Kyle Quast and Jarrett Dace. On Sunday, Delin Martin, Keith Zenkowski, Tracy Franklin, and Tony Shaw. Happy anniversary on Sunday to Matt and Shelley Tolliver. Coming up now, about nine minutes away from the hour of 7 o'clock, let's go across our wide Missouri with Bob Pretty. Across our wide Missouri with Bob Pretty. Listen to show archives, hear about this day in Missouri history, and learn more about the Show Me State by visiting MissouriNet.com today. When Missouri became a territory of America in 1804, a large number of the Catholic clergy in the territory were exiled and the Catholic Church suffered. Historian Dwayne Meyer says the church also suffered from a tradition of liberalism among some of the wealthier class. Some of the upper class, as well as some of the French immigrants, felt, says Meyer, that religion was one of the things for ignorant people and superstitious people. Philosophy, they contended, was for gentlemen. But then came a man who would rescue the Catholic Church in Missouri, and will tell his story in a minute. Not everyone recognizes that they might have a gambling problem. How do you know if gambling is a problem for you? Ask yourself if either or both of the following questions are accurate. Have you felt the need to bet more and more money? Have you ever lied to people important to you about how much you gambled? If your answer is yes to either of these questions, free help is available. Call 1-888-BETS-OFF for more information. The Missouri Department of Agriculture wants you to know that black vultures can be harmful to livestock operations. Make sure you know the difference between the black vulture and the turkey vulture. The black vulture has a black head, while the turkey vulture has a red head. Also, the turkey vulture is larger in both size and wingspan. Mitigation resources for your farm can be found on MDA's website at agriculture.mo.gov. That's agriculture.mo.gov. The church had fallen on hard times in Missouri in the early 1800s. So bad were conditions that the log church built in St. Louis in 1777 had not been cared for and was crumbling and falling in. But then came the right Reverend Louis William Valentine de Berg, who carried the title of Bishop of Louisiana and the Floridas. The town then numbered a little under 1,500 people. Ten years earlier, another priest named Dunand had written, having arrived in St. Louis, I found the district in a pitiful state. Deprived of priests and all spiritual aid, the morals of the people were entirely corrupt, and ignorance of religion was so general that the inhabitants scarcely recognized the name Catholic. Shortly after arriving, Bishop de Berg would write, My cathedral, which looks like a poor stable, is falling in ruins, so that a new church is absolutely necessary. A parish meeting was held, and almost $4,300 was collected. At a later meeting, another $1,300 came in. The biggest amount of money, however, came from the sale of the old pews in the crumbling log church, worth almost $6,800. Then the wealthy Shoto family and another man loaned the church about $4,500 more. The main part of the new building was to be 134 by 40 feet, 40 feet high, with five large arches on each side. A tall steeple, as tall as the building was deep, would contain several bells from France. Twenty-one months after the plans were made, the first service was held in the new church in Christmas 1819. 
Despite the fact that the church had six paintings donated by Louis XVIII, the king of France, and despite the money collected to start construction, operations of the church suffered from lack of money. Help finally came from the Association for the Propagation of the Faith in France under the Archbishop of Rouen. Bishop de Berg established a number of personal items. He furnished a number of items. The church organ belonged to him. It was received during his travels in Europe in 1815, but he gave it to his new cathedral. De Berg revived the church in St. Louis. When he first arrived, one of his contemporaries said the people weren't very interested in him. As a matter of fact, they said the emperor of China would have been just as interesting, and his tumble-down church was described as having no doors, no windows, no floor. But so successful were the bishop's efforts that in only 13 years it became apparent still another new church was needed. By them, de Berg had resigned, succeeded by an associate, Bishop Joseph Rosati. And so in April of 1831, the cornerstone of a new church was laid, and it's still standing as a national landmark near the Gateway Arch, the fourth Catholic church on the same lot since the church was established in 1770. De Berg's church suffered the ignominious fate of becoming a warehouse until a fire burned it down in 1835. De Berg was a man highly respected who came to an area in which his church had withered, but another priest who worked closely with him, Father Felix DeAndrus, wrote, I must confess that after God, the mention of all that has been or will be done is due to the rare talents, industry, experience, activity, ability, prudence, vigilance, patience, zeal, and a word to the indefatigable perseverance of this extraordinary man, Bishop de Berg. Bishop de Berg, when you visit the old cathedral on the St. Louis Riverfront, it's good to remember that name. A man who built a cathedral where the cornerstone was laid on this date, March 29th in 1818. That was Across Our Wide Missouri with Bob Pretty. To listen to show archives, hear about this day in Missouri history, and learn more about the Show Me State, visit MissouriNet.com. How soy can help reduce microplastics. Hello, I'm Megan Grebner with Healthy Living on Brownfield. Baby wipes on the market today are made up of pulp, plastic, and chemicals that can cause microplastics and hurt the environment. Kyle Hahn is a junior majoring in biological engineering at Purdue University. One of the reasons that more than 90% of the baby wipes on the market that contain plastic is because plastic polymer is the key to hold all the baby wipes together to make sure they won't tear apart. He and Ben Gottlieb, a freshman studying finance at Purdue's Daniels School of Business, created a soy-based, eco-friendly, and biodegradable alternative for the Indiana Soybean Alliance 2024 Soybean Innovation Competition. A fiber that's made from soybeans, it actually creates a very strong grip while we're using it, but in the meanwhile, it provides a very silky, silk-like texture that's very gentle on baby skin. So that is how we started to know that soybeans are very versatile and we can actually make this work. And a big thing that makes us the big factor that we outperform other name brand baby wipes on the market is we actually use soy lexitin. It's a very gentle surfactant in our baby wipe formulation that help us um, clean up the dirt very well while we're testing it. Soy Silk took home top prize at the competition and could very well pave the way for a more environmentally friendly version of wet wipes in the future. I'm Megan Grebner with Healthy Living on Brownfield. Black vultures can be harm. When's the last time you were down at Merrimack Caverns? Well, if you haven't been in a while, why don't you go back? The entire cave is now open, and they're waiting to serve you at Merrimack Caverns. So take the family down. If the family hasn't been, if you've got people coming from out of town, it's a great place to visit. Merrimack Caverns in Stanton, Missouri. Don't forget, they've got the zip line, boat rides, camping. It's all there at the cave. Merrimack Caverns, Stanton, Missouri. Be sure to head that way soon. You know, when the Cowboys play, these big guys come out on the football field. They've been working out. They're strong. They're vibrant and all of this, you know. But they're not the most powerful guys on the field. The most powerful guys on the field are little short guys with striped T-shirts and a whistle. Dr. Tony Evans on Focus on the Family Minute using a fun analogy to describe the authority that every Christian has. See, the Cowboys can knock you down. The refs can put you out. Because while the players have power, the refs have authority. And you and I cannot defeat Satan by raw power, but we do have authority. You have policemen I saw outside stopping traffic. They don't stop traffic by power. A car can run over them. They stop traffic by authority. Because they have the blue uniform and the badge, we stop when they put out their hand because they have authority. The blood of Jesus Christ, by virtue of his resurrection, gives us authority in history. More from Dr. Evans at FamilyMinute.org. The Focus on the Family Family Minute brought to you on Fridays by the folks down at Merrimack Caverns. 
I think the Lesters are down there for uh, Easter services, so we might check that out. Uh, coming up, uh, 7 o'clock, about a minute away from 7, we'll have news from USA and Missouri Net, our local news, and go through all that. Uh, again, our birthdays today, Faye Hicks, Chris Zenkowski, and Michelle Parks. On Saturday, Lyle Quast will be 63. Jared Dace will celebrate a birthday on Saturday as well. On Sunday, Delyn Martin, Keith Zankowski, Tracy Franklin, and Tony Shaw all have birthdays. Matt and Shelley Tolliver celebrating anniversary number 34 on Sunday as well. Uh, I believe uh, little John Mike McCullough will be with me this morning. It's uh, 7.30 and 8.30, so I look forward to having them back in here and visiting with them. Again, I had this note earlier. Uh, the eastbound lanes of I-44 are closed. Both lanes closed at mile marker 188 due to an overturned vehicle. All eastbound traffic must exit at Highway 63 in Rolla at uh, 186. So use an alternate route. Uh, be careful as you travel westbound through that area as well. That's that construction area. People will be slowing down to take a look. So uh, yeah, just uh, watch it as you go through that area if you're heading west this morning towards Springfield or whatever. Coming up on 7 o'clock, KTUI 1560 AM Sullivan. It's time for the news from USA. USA News. I'm Ryan Daniels. Presidential politics taking center stage this Good Friday morning. Donald Trump commenting briefly on the road ahead for the wife and young child of slain New York City police officer Jonathan Diller. They're devastated. They've got a tough road. It's going to be a very tough road. Trump paid respects at the family wake on Thursday in New York. The 31-year-old NYPD officer was shot by a suspect during a routine traffic stop in Queens on Monday. Trump said he's an advocate for law and order. President Biden's being criticized by Republicans for attending a fundraiser in New York. Meanwhile, Biden and First Lady Jill Biden offering their condolences to victims in the wake of a stabbing spree that happened in Illinois this week. A State Department official stepping down to protest U.S. support of Israel. This week, Anel Shaleen announced her resignation from her position with the Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights, and Labor. She said she could no longer work for the administration as, she says... It has enabled Israeli atrocities in Gaza. The president of Ukraine urging Congress to deliver critical aid to Kyiv in its war with Russia. President Zelensky briefed House Speaker Mike Johnson on the battlefield situation on Thursday, warning of Ukraine's dwindling resources and Russia's advances. He said quick passage of aid by Congress is vital. The Senate last month passed a bipartisan national security measure that includes funds for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan, although the House has yet to take it up. The wealthiest 1% of Americans are now worth around $44 trillion in combined stock and asset value between them all. Roughly 300,000 of America's wealthiest households have been collecting trillions in additional income the last several years, too. Along with inflation since 2020, their wealth has increased by roughly $15 trillion. This is USA News. And now another no-brainer money-saving tip from Progressive. That doesn't sound good. Paper shredder's jammed, but I think I fixed it. Oh, well, try shredding these $50 bills, then. Seems like it's working. Mm, better try another 400 bucks. Stop. Instead of using money, use regular paper. And here's a better tip from Progressive on how not to waste money. Don't pay too much for car insurance. Drivers who switch and save could save hundreds. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Potential savings will vary. Not available in all states. If you're a diabetic, we have great news. You can end the painful finger sticks with a new CGM. Plus, they may be covered by Medicare, Medicaid, or private insurance. If you test and inject daily, you may qualify. Call U.S. Med now to learn more. 800-471-7065. 800-471-7065. 800-471-7065. That's 800-471-7065. A federal judge Thursday sentencing Sam Bankman freed to 25 years in prison for his leading role in one of the biggest financial scandals in American history, capping the stunning fall of the former cryptocurrency magnate and one-time Washington megadonor. The judge handing down the sentence almost five months after a jury found Bankman freed guilty of orchestrating a massive fraud scheme centered on his crypto empire, Bankman freed faced a maximum 110 years in prison. 
Texas Republican Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick says the Biden administration is turning its back on the Lone Star State and on Americans. He points to the current status of immigration at the U.S. southern border. People are dying. Texas citizens are dying, whether it's from fentanyl or an illegal drug driver or a killer or a gang member. People are dying in this country. Patrick also spoke in favor of the new state law in Texas, SB4, which would allow state and local officers to arrest those suspected of entering the country illegally. Russia has blocked a United Nations panel of experts from overseeing North Korea's nuclear weapons program. Thursday, Russia vetoed the annual renewal of sanctions monitoring on North Korea. State Department spokesman Matthew Miller described this move as indicative of increased cooperation between Russia and North Korea. U.S. officials have raised concerns, alleging North Korea is providing weapons to Russia in its war with Ukraine. I'm Ryan Daniels, USA News. Hi, I'm Ronnie Deutsch, and if you or your business owe money to the IRS, I've got great news for you. Tax laws have changed. Billions of dollars are earmarked for IRS Fresh Start programs. And if you qualify, you can literally save tens of thousands of dollars. Listen, I know what you're going through. Call me if you want to speak with a tax attorney or tax professional for free. 800-284-9275. That's 800-284-9275. You deserve extraordinary care close to home. From primary care to advanced specialties right here in Sullivan. And access to all that BJC Healthcare has to offer. We're here to provide the care you need. Missouri Baptist Sullivan Hospital and BJC Healthcare. Care that is comprehensive coordinated, and completely about you. Learn more at MissouriBaptistSullivan.org. Missouri Net News, I'm Marshall Griffin. A funeral service is set for today for a University of Missouri student who was found dead last week in Nashville. Family and friends will gather in Springfield today to say farewell to 22-year-old Riley Strain. Strain, who was on a trip to Nashville with his fraternity friends, went missing after being separated from them on the way back to their hotel. The Missouri Senate has given preliminary approval to a bill that would create a prescribed pediatric extended care center license for providers that offer care to children with complex medical needs. Under the bill, these services require continuous care for at least four hours a day. A provision from Republican Bill Eichel would limit the scope of authority that the Department of Health has to make rules and regulations for the license. We're giving uh, authority to DHSS to inspect the conditions of the places in which the applicant operates. Uh, including records, premises, and children to be served. My concern was that we were going to be giving DHSS direct access to children, potentially without uh, the presence of their parents. Services that these care centers provide could include skilled nursing, personal care, nutritional and developmental assessment, and speech, physical, and occupational therapy. The bill requires one more vote from the Senate before moving to the House. Missouri House leaders are proposing nearly $730 million be spent on making improvements to I-44, the longest interstate highway in the Show Me State. They would include expanding the highway to six lanes in and around Springfield, Rolla, and Joplin. Republican State Rep Don Mayhew says upgrades to I-44 are especially needed to improve truck traffic. I mean, just from a freight standpoint alone, uh, MoDOT's own study shows that I-44 carries about eight and a half times the freight tonnage that I-70 does. I-44 is a direct connection to the Long Beach Port facility, which I think, if I remember correctly, handles about 80 percent of the international trade. The financial package to improve I-44 is included in the Missouri House's proposed budget for next year. This is Missouri Net. The Supplemental Security Income Program provides monthly payments to help meet basic needs, like putting food on the table, paying the rent, or buying new shoes for growing feet. You may qualify if your income and financial resources are low, and you are 65 or older, or an adult or child with a disability, or who is blind. Call 1-800-772-1213 or go to ssa.gov SSI to start to apply. Produced by Social Security at U.S. taxpayer expense. Eyes on the road, hands on the wheel, safely drive that automobile. Eyes on the road, hands on the wheel. Safely drive that automobile. Eyes on the road, hands on the wheel. 
Eyes on the road, hands on the wheel to help low-income Missourians with hearing loss gain their hearing again is halfway to the legislative finish line. Elisa Nelson reports. Current Missouri law allows Medicaid payments to cover the cost of hearing aids for eligible low-income children, pregnant women, and visually impaired people. The Missouri House of Representatives has passed a bill that would expand coverage to include hearing aids and cochlear implants for all eligible low-income residents. Representative Cameron Parker, a Republican from Southeast Missouri's Campbell, is sponsoring the bill. It's the state Senate's turn to take a look at the legislation. Elisa Nelson, Missouri Net. A bill designed to toughen penalties against suspects in police chases is on its way to the Missouri Senate. The House on Wednesday passed the so-called Valentine's Law, which would make it a Class D felony to recklessly flee from or detain law enforcement using a motor vehicle. And Missouri has seen a dramatic decrease in drought conditions thanks to the heavy rains that soaked the state. About 76% of the state is experiencing dry conditions with no areas of extreme drought. This is Missouri Net. Do you have a guy... Like your dad or grandpa had a guy. Something broke around the house you couldn't fix, Gramps would say, call my guy. He probably drove an old blue pickup, big tool chest in the back, decades of calluses on strong hands, name on his shirt like Don or Ed or Buddy. He just always seemed to know the best way to fix any problem. That's why grandpa trusted him. There's not many of those guys around today, and no wonder, between taxes and technology, insurance and licensing, it's hard to be that guy and be competitive. Well, that's why this company started. We love what we do, and we still want to be that guy. Independent technicians, generations of combined experience, all joined together as one powerful team. Strength in numbers, you know? If you're ever stuck with a broken furnace or air conditioner, now you've got a guy. We're Level 9, heating and cooling. Level 9, HVAC.com. Looking at local news from the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio on this Friday, the Missouri State Highway Patrol reported an arrest at 10.16 p.m. Thursday in Crawford County. 39-year-old Joseph M. Yarrow of Cuba was arrested on patrol charge of DWI. He was processed and released. At 6.06 p.m. Thursday in Franklin County, 26-year-old Danny I. Lopez Hernandez of St. Charles was arrested on a patrol charge for driving while intoxicated. He was taken to the Franklin County Adult Detention Facility and placed on 12-hour hold. At 1.50 a.m. Thursday in Boone County, 23-year-old Nicholas J. Reeves of Sullivan was arrested for driving while intoxicated. He was released on summons. The Franklin County Government Center, County Administrative Offices, Historic Courthouse, Health Department, and Highway Department will be closed today in observance of Good Friday. The Sheriff's Department will remain open as they are 24 hours every day. Most city, county, and state offices and uh, most federal offices are closed today for the Good Friday holiday. Some things coming up around the area today. The Missouri Baptist Solvent Hospital Auxiliary having a bake sale fundraiser from 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. today. Tables are located near the outpatient entrance. It's cash or credit only. Serve Pro of Franklin County sponsoring an American Red Cross blood drive in the training room at number 2 Truman Court in Union. That'll run from 1 until 5 p.m. today. You can visit redcrossblood.org, enter SERVPRO, S-E-R-V-P-R-O, to schedule an appointment. The second annual Chief Mason Griffith Easter Parade going on in Rosebud, sponsored by the Rosebud Community Park Association and the Police Department. That will get underway at 5.30 this evening. Parade lineup will be at 4.30 at the Rosebud RV Park facing Rosebud Avenue. The parade will start at 5.30. Bring out the kids, uh, make sure they bring an Easter basket to load up on candy. They'll have a candy cannon at 6.30 after the parade. You're invited to bring your groups, decorated vehicles, floats, UTVs, first responder vehicles, etc. to join the fun. Please bring your own candy to throw out. No plastic eggs. The famous park fish fry will be going on from 4 till 7 p.m. as well, and they are accepting donations for the event. Some church services around the area tonight. New Testament Baptist Church in Sullivan having Good Friday services at 7 o'clock tonight at the church. They're located at 962 North Church Street in Sullivan. And they're going to have uh, Sunday morning services with a choir performance at 10, followed by an Easter egg hunt at the church. Temple Baptist Church in Sullivan having a Good Friday worship service at 7 o'clock tonight. All are invited. 
The Victorian Place of Cuba is sponsoring a benefit adult after dark Easter egg hunt tonight. Food and drinks are provided in exchange for a donation to Longest Day, which is an organization that raises funds and awareness for the care, support, and research efforts of the Alzheimer's Association. Food will be served starting at 6. The egg hunt should begin after dark at about 7.30. Make sure you bring your flashlights, headlamps, or phones. MoDOT has scheduled road work for Highway 28 in the Owensville area. Milling transitions began last night by Capital Paving. Should be complete around April 1st. After that, the paving work should start. They will be working at night, so there will be no daytime closures, but use caution while driving through those work zones. With the municipal elections coming up next Tuesday, April the 2nd, the Gasconade and Franklin County Courthouses will be open on Saturday for absentee voting. The Franklin County Courthouse at 401 East Main Street, room 100A, will be open from 8 a.m. until 12 noon. The Gascony County Courthouse at 119 East 1st Street is open from 8 until 1.30. It'll all be open during regular hours on Monday for absentee voting. In Crawford County, you must vote at the Crawford County Courthouse and in Washington County as well. Hours there are 8 to 4.30 and they'll be doing that on Monday. Attention Sullivan School District parents, if you have a child that will be five years of age before July 31st of this year, uh, you are requested to come to the Sullivan Primary School on April 4th for kindergarten registration from 7.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. They will need your child's shot record and birth certificate. From the parents, they'll need a copy of your driver's license and proof of residency such as an electric bill or rental agreement. If you have any questions, you can call the Sullivan Primary School office at 573-468-5171, option 4. The St. Clair R13 Board of Education pleased to announce that Mrs. Samantha Tottisman has been hired as the new Edgar Murray Elementary School Assistant Principal. Congratulations to Mrs. Tottisman as she continues her commitment to excellence in education. The Sullivan City Council will be meeting next Tuesday at 7 o'clock at City Hall, 210 West Washington. Meeting will come to order at 7 o'clock. Under committee reports, Planning and Zoning has scheduled a public hearing for April the 9th for an annexation proposal at 1233 Thatcher Road. We'll also have a report from the Board of Adjustment. There are no ordinances on the agenda at this time. There is a closed session scheduled for real estate litigation, personnel, and contractual negotiations. The public is invited to attend the open meeting 7 o'clock next Tuesday, April 2nd at Sullivan City Hall, 210 West Washington. That's a look at your local reported news from the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio on this Friday. Have a great weekend, everybody. This is Bobby D. Whether you love them or can't stand them, surprises are a part of life. Hi, I'm Donnie Greenwald, your Sullivan Edward Jones Financial Advisor, and I can help get you ready for whatever life throws at you, even the welcome surprises. As your needs change, we can change what you need to do to help you end up where you want to be. And while there is never a good time to experience unexpected costs, we can work together to help make them feel a little less unexpected. Call me at 573-468-6046 or visit edwardjones.com to get started today. Edward Jones, member SIPC. In recent funeral announcements, Frances Ann Bell passed away Sunday, March 24th in St. Peter's at the age of 84. Funeral services will be held at 11 o'clock this morning at the Concordia Lutheran Church in Bourbon. In Earnment will follow at Bourbon Cemetery. Cremation has taken place. A visitation will be held from 9.30 this morning until services at 11 at the church. All arrangements for Francis Bell are under the care of the Eaton Funeral Home and Cremation Center of Sullivan. Sharon Lee Bender, nay Skelton of St. Clair, passed away Saturday, March 23rd at the age of 80. Funeral services will be held at 1 o'clock this afternoon at the Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair with burial in Crespi Memorial Park in St. Clair. Visitation will be held from 10 a.m. until services at 1 p.m. today at the Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair for Sharon Bender. Benjamin Adam Bach of Union passed away Monday, March 25th at the age of 37. Funeral services will be held Saturday at 10 a.m. at the Gotten Strader Chapel in Owensville with burial in Countryside Memorial Gardens. Visitation for Benjamin Adam Bach will be held Friday from 4 until 8 p.m. at the Gotten Strader Chapel in Owensville. Peggy J. Bryant of Bourbon passed away Sunday, March 24th in St. Louis at the age of 64. 
Funeral services will be held at 11 a.m. Saturday at the Oak Hill Free Will Baptist Church of Union. Interment will follow at Smith Cemetery, Nigger Springs. Visitation will be from 9 until 11 a.m. Saturday at the Oak Hill Free Will Baptist Church of Union. Memorial contributions may be made to the American Breast Cancer Society or St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in memory of Peggy Bryant. All arrangements are under the care and direction of the Eaton Funeral Home and Cremation Center of Sullivan. Ralph Willard Dulaney of Cuba passed away at his home on Saturday, March 23rd at the age of 85. The family has chosen cremation as his final disposition. No services will be held at this time. All arrangements for Ralph Willard Dulaney are under the direction of the Hudson Funeral Home in Cuba. The completed funeral announcements with all the survivors will air during our expanded edition of KTUI News at 8 o'clock this morning. Did you know that Compass Health Network provides pediatric and adult dental services? Best of all, our dental care is designed for everyone. We accept most insurance plans and Medicaid. Plus, we offer a sliding scale fee for those without insurance. From major dental procedures to gentle pediatric dentistry, we've got it all. Call 844-853-8937 or visit compasshealthnetwork.org to find a Compass Health Network dental office near you. Your journey to a better smile begins with us. Book your appointment today. New Testament Baptist Church in Sullivan is starting a new addiction recovery ministry called Life Issues. It's a biblical approach to the 12 steps, bringing scriptural principles into personal focus and making them come alive for transformational living. Whether you struggle with addictions, food, depression, anxiety, or relationships, you'll be encouraged to see how others have found a new way of life with hope for the future through this program. Life Issues will meet weekly on Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. at New Testament Baptist Church. You're not alone. To find out more, contact New Testament Baptist Church at 573-468-3334. From the KTUI Weatherbug Weather Center for this morning, a clear sky, a sunny, breezy day today. The high temperature is 74, winds gusting to 30 miles per hour. Partly cloudy and breezy with an isolated shower tonight, low 54, winds gusting to 30 miles per hour. Partly sunny sky Saturday, the high 74. Partly sunny Sunday, maybe a shower or thunderstorm, the high 80. Monday is going to be a cloudy to partly sunny day, showers likely, and maybe a thunderstorm. For KTUI, I'm meteorologist Jim Rinaldi. Thank you, Jim. 48 degrees at the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio, still 47 out the Sullivan Regional Airport. Been holding pretty steady there for most of the morning. Happy birthday today to Faye Hicks, Chris Zenkowski, and Michelle Parks. Saturday, Lyle Quast will be 63. Jared Dace has a birthday on Saturday as well. On Sunday, Dylan Martin, Keith Zenkowski, Tracy Franklin, and Tony Shaw. Anniversary on Sunday, Matt and Shelly Tolliver, celebrating number 34. And it is Red Friday. Remember everyone deployed. Of course, it's also Good Friday. Knights of Columbus Founders Day. National Lemon Chiffon Cake Day. And if you'd like to make one, I would be more than happy to sample it for you. Uh, National Mom and Pop Business Owners Day. It's National Vietnam War Veterans Day. No Homework Day, which is observed the last Friday of March and annually on May 6th. It's also Smoke and Mirrors Day and Texas Love the Children Day. All right, 48 degrees and 22 minutes past 7. Uh, we'll have sports coming up after this from Sullivan Bank. Earn 5.51 annual percentage yield on a seven-month CD at Sullivan Bank. Use our CD calculator on SullivanBank.com and see how much you could earn. Experience great rates and a step up in service. We are waiting to greet you with a smile. Annual percentage yield of 5.51 APY is accurate as of December 26, 2023. $1,000 minimal balance required to earn stated APY. Penalty may be imposed for early withdrawal, which will reduce earnings on the account. Interest compounded and credited quarterly. Rate subject to change at any time. Available at all locations. Looking at sports on this Friday from the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio. The Cardinals opened their regular season on the road yesterday in Los Angeles against the Dodgers. Coming up short in a 7-1 score, here's Ricky Horton and John Rooney with the Redbird Recap. With Ricky Horton, I'm John Rooney. Victor Scott II made his Major League debut, got on on an error, and picked up his first Major League stolen base. Paul Goldschmidt had a 3-for-4 day. Unfortunately, he had the only hits for the Cardinals as the Dodgers won 7-1. Tyler Glass now pitched very well for the Dodgers in picking up the victory. And the top of the Dodgers lineup, which we all know is going to be good, they were better than good yesterday with Mookie Betts homering, Freddie Freeman homering, and picking up an awful lot of hits, including Otani, who had a good day. But Miles Michaelis just did not have the start he wanted. Tyler Glass now did. 
too many walks too for the Cardinals pitching staff that actually resulted in runs as well. And one of the bright spots, Matthew Libertor had a very fast eighth inning. And he looked sharp too, throwing 97 miles an hour and showing his good curveball. We'll be on the air tonight from Dodger Stadium at 8.15. Ricky will have the lineups at 9 o'clock. Zach Thompson will be opposed by Bobby Miller, and we hope you'll join us. The Dodgers won yesterday 7-1. Thank you, John. We'll have that Cardinals game on the air tonight. Pre-game at 8.15, first pitch at 9.20 from Los Angeles. The Blues had a strong third period to come away with a 5-3 win at home over Calgary last night. Here's Alex Ferrario with the Blues recap. Last night, the Blues returned to action in their push for the playoffs in the Western Conference. They took on the Calgary Flames in the first period. It would be Zach Bolduc that picked up the first goal for the Blues, the second of the season for the youngster. But Calgary would tie things up a little less than two minutes later, 1-1. Calgary and before the period would end they capitalized on a power play where the Blues were down by a goal. Then early in the second period Nathan Walker dropped the gloves with Joel Hanley of the Calgary Flames and eight seconds later Jake Neighbors scored to tie things up. Then Pavel Buchnevich would score it on the power play but before the second period would end the Flames would get one back to even it up at three. Then two minutes and four seconds into the third period Brandon Saad would score the 24th goal of the season for him and then Pavel Buchnevich would cap it off with an empty netter as the Blues take down the Flames 5-3. Also in this one, Jordan Bennington stopping 23 of 26 shots and picking up two assists. First goalie since Curtis Joseph in 93 to have two assists in the game. Blues back at it on Saturday against the Sharks. 7 o'clock puck drop, 6.30 pregame skate on the St. Louis Blues Radio Network. Thanks, Alex. We'll have that Blues game on Saturday night on 1560 AM. Looking at the college scoreboard from Thursday, number nine Vanderbilt rode a shutout pitching effort to a 3-1 decision over Missouri baseball in the opening contest of the two clubs' three-game Southeastern Conference Series Thursday evening at Vanderbilt. Second-ranked Central Missouri Mules baseball hit six home runs on its way to a 20-10 victory over the Newman Jets in the first of a three-game MIAA series. East Central Baseball dropped a doubleheader at North Central Missouri College on Thursday, losing 2-0 and 8-4. Emporia State Baseball dropped the next inning battle against Central Oklahoma on Thursday night as the Hornets fell 7-6 to the Broncos in game one of their series. T.J. Rockerbomber from Herman won for four with an RBI for Emporia. Mineral Area Baseball swept a twin bill from Metropolitan Community College, 11-10 and 16-8. Missouri S&T Miners set a program record for the most home runs in a single game with eight in Thursday's 25-24 loss to the Illinois Springfield Prairie Stars. Teams combined for 48 hits and 15 home runs. Tommy Reether from Washington was 2-5 for five with a solo homer, two walks and two runs for the Miners. Crowder College overcame a 7-0 deficit, scoring nine runs in the second inning on their way to an 18-7 win over St. Charles Community College yesterday. And Umsel Baseball dropped its series opener at number 21 Maryville, 14-4 in seven innings Thursday afternoon. College softball, number 12 Missouri, picked up an 11-2 run rule victory over George Mason Thursday at the George Mason Complex. ECC softball fell at MSU West Plains Thursday, 14-0 and 5-4 in a walk-off. Abreu Simmons was the losing pitcher for East Central in Game 1. Lexi Lewis from Washington, 2-2 two two with two stolen bases for the Falcons. In Game 2, Addison Steele struck out 7 in the loss. Avery Little, 1-3 for three with a double, a run scored in an RBI. Peyton Robinson, 1-3 for three with an RBI. And Lewis was 1-2 for two with a walk, a run scored, and two stolen bases. Alexis Funkhauser from Solvin was 2 for 3 with 2 RBI in Game 1, 2 for 3 in the second game for MSU West Plains. Jefferson College Softball took both games of their doubleheader with Mineral Area, 8-0 and 17-6. Number 24 Kansas dropped the first game of a three-game series against number 1 Oklahoma, 6-1 last night at home. Looking at the schedule of games for today, Missouri will continue the series at Vanderbilt at 6 o'clock. Illinois State at Missouri State starting a three-game series at 6.30. Central Missouri at Newman at 2 o'clock. Hannibal LaGrange at Columbia College at 1. East Central will finish up that series at North Central Missouri with a doubleheader at noon. Emporia State at Central Oklahoma at 3. Mineral Area at Metropolitan Community College for a doubleheader at noon. Also at noon, Missouri S&T at Illinois Springfield for 2. Moberly Area Community College at Heston College for a twin bill at noon. Eureka College at Principia at 3 o'clock. St. Charles 
at Crowder for a doubleheader at 1. Jefferson College at St. Louis Community College at 1. It'll be Three Rivers at State Fair for a doubleheader at noon. Umsel at Maryville, a doubleheader at 1. And UHSP at William Woods at 6 o'clock. Softball, Missouri at Villanova to finish up their East Coast trip at 9 o'clock this morning. Murray State at Missouri State for two games at 1. Oklahoma at Kansas, 5 o'clock tonight. Lincoln at Northeastern State for two games at 1 o'clock. Lindenwood at Tennessee Tech, a doubleheader at noon. Missouri Baptist at Stevens College for two games at 2 o'clock. Doubleheader for Missouri S&T at Rockhurst at noon. North Central Missouri at State Fair at noon. And Central Baptist at UHSP softball for a doubleheader at 2 o'clock. Outdoor track starting today. It's the SBU Open, Evangel, Missouri S&T, Missouri Southern. The CMU Invite with Font Bond, Hannibal LaGrange, and William Woods. The Washington University Distance Carnival, Font Bonn, Maryville, Mineral Area, Missouri Baptist, Missouri S&T are at that, along with Missouri Southern, State Fair, Truman State, and Washburn. Also, the Joey Haynes Invitational and CMO continues today. The Raleigh Relays and Texas Relays for St. Louis University and the uh, Dutch Invitational at Central College in Iowa for Truman State. In college golf today and tomorrow, Font Bonn takes on Olivet at Kankakee Elks Golf Course. In the local scoreboard from last night, Sullivan uh, picked up a game against Eldon going on the road, coming up on the short end of a 6-1 decision in the varsity game. Sullivan JV beat Eldon 6-3. Herman taking both games from Silex, 13-3 in varsity, 2-1 in JV. New Haven picked up a win over Wellsville, 14-0. Bell down Dixon, 6-4. Francis Howell JV defeating Washington 4-1. Washington freshman defeated St. Charles West, 14-9. And it was Owensville C-team down Waynesville 14 to 8. Girls soccer, Sullivan with a sweep last night. They beat North County 4 0 in varsity and 5 0 in JV. They played one half of JV last night. Borgia over Fallon Christian 3 1 in a varsity matchup. Owensville blanks Dixon 8 0 in Pacific over Valley Park 8 0. Liberty defeating Washington 3 0 in varsity, 5 1 in JV. In spring softball, Conway on top of Bourbon last night 8 2. High school track from the Lynn Invitational. Local teams in the girls' standings. Herman was third, Cuba eighth, Steelville 11th, St. James 12th, and Bell was 13th. On the boys' side, Steelville finishing fifth, Herman seventh, and Cuba 10th. Some of the top finishers in the girls' 100-meter dash, Ashlyn Hughes from Herman was second. In the 200, Riley Maness from Cuba was second. In the 400, Avery Campbell from St. James fifth, and Erica Schutt from Herman it was eighth. In the girls' 800, Keeley Lane from Herman was third. Kaylee Fulham from Cuba was fifth. Girls' 1600, Amelia Uthlot from Herman, fifth. Vanessa Perone of St. James was seventh. In the girls' 3200 meters, Catherine Strackeljohn from St. James was second. Cadence Basham from Cuba was third. Jocelyn Neal from Herman, fourth. And Tajel McDaniel from Bell was seventh. In the girls' 100-meter hurdles, Abby Kreidner from Steelville was seventh. She finished fourth in the girls' 300 hurdles. 4x100 relay, Herman 1st, Steelville 5th. In the 4x2, Steelville was 3rd, Herman 4th. In the 4x400, Herman 1st, Cuba 6th, and Steelville 8th. And the 4x800, Cuba 2nd, Steelville 4th, Herman was 6th. In the girls' high jump, Hannah Turnbow from Steelville 4th, Jillian Frederick from Herman was 8th. In the pole vault, Ashlyn Hughes from Herman was 5th. Alex Hughes from St. James was 8th in the long jump. Allie Bush, fourth from Herman, and Alex Hughes, eighth from St. James in the girls' triple jump. Shannon Black from Cuba, fifth in the shot put. Aubrey Rembert from Bell, first in the discus. Molly Bailey from Steelville was seventh. Shannon Black from Cuba was eighth. Aubrey Rembert from Bell, first in the javelin. Karen Gooden from St. James was second. On the boys' side, in the 100-meter dash, Micah Volner from Cuba was seventh. He was eighth in the 200 meters and seventh in the 400. In the boys' 1,600-meter run, Nolan Kopp from Herman was second. Tandon Baker from Cuba was eighth. In the 3,200, Nathan Menke from Herman was eighth. In the boys' 110-meter hurdles, Gage Harris of Steelville was second. Noah Halbert from Cuba was seventh. In the 300 meters, Landon Rutledge from Steelville was fourth. Noah Halbert from Cuba was fifth. Four by 100-meter relay, Herman fourth, Steelville eighth. Four by 200, Steelville fourth, Herman eighth. In the 4x400 meter relay, Herman 6, Cuba 7th. In the 4x800, Steelville was 4th. Boys high jump, Cameron Brown of Steelville was 1st, John Hyde of Herman 3rd. Brown was also 1st in the boys long jump. In the triple jump, Boston Setzer from Steelville was 5th. Boys shot put, Zane Brown of Cuba 4th. Carter Eppel from Herman 6th. Aiden Redkowski from Steelville was 8th. 
In the discus, Carter Eppel was fifth, and in the javelin, Caden Humphrey from Herman was seventh. Middle school track yesterday at the Bourbon Invitational. Sullivan girls were first, followed by Steelville in second, Cuba third, Bland was fifth, Owensville sixth, Bourbon was eighth. On the boys' side, Sullivan finishing first, Owensville was third, Bland fourth, Cuba fifth, Bourbon seventh, and Steelville was eighth. Top finishers, uh, girls long jump, Justice Evard from Cuba, and the boys long jump, Blaze Faye from Cuba. Boys triple jump, Blake Tolliver from Sullivan. In the girls discus, Jersey Bright from Cuba was first. Girls shot put, Peyton Bray of Sullivan first. In the boys shot put, John Vandergriff of Cuba took first. Girls 4x800 meter relay, Sullivan 1, Owensville 2. Boys 4x800, Sullivan 1, Bland 2, Bourbon was 4. Girls 100 hurdles, Chloe Grief from Sullivan was first and Riley Rulo from Sullivan was second. In the boys 100 hurdles, Ryan Evans from Owensville first, Blaze Faye from Cuba was second. Girls 100 meter dash, Justice Savard from Cuba was first, Tegan Pullman from Sullivan second. Boys 100, Blaze Faye of Cuba was second, Blake Tolliver of Sullivan third. Girls 4x200, Sullivan 1st, Owensville 4th. Boys 4x2, Owensville 1st, Sullivan 2nd. Girls 1600 meter run, Karina Broniger from Sullivan 1st. Adelaide Perkins from Steelville was 2nd. In the boys 1600, Colton Hazelwood of Bland was 2nd. Jackson Prater of Bland was 4th. Girls 4x100, Sullivan 2nd, Owensville 3rd. Boys 4x1, Owensville 2nd, and Sullivan 3rd. Girls 400 meter dash, Natalie Lansford of Bland was first, Zoe Camden from Bland was second. In the boys 400, Malachi Friedendahl from Bland was first, Carson Price of Sullivan second. Girls 800, Ella Basham from Cuba first, Abby Schluter from Steelville was second. In the boys 800, David Skaggs of Bland was first, Colin Heyman from Sullivan was second. In the girls 200, Justice Savard from Cuba was first, Ellie Crump of Sullivan second. Boys 200, Blaze Faye of Cuba second, Lucas Westbrook of Sullivan was fourth. Girls 4x4, four four, Sullivan first and Bland second. In the boys 4x4, four four, Bland first, Sullivan was second. Schedule of games for today in baseball, Cuba will be at Vienna at 4.30, North Point at Washington Varsity only at 4.30, Steelville playing in the Bismarck Tournament today and tomorrow. High school track, Sullivan, Borgia, Owensville, Pacific, St. Clair, Union, and others will be at the Washington Pentathlon tomorrow. Sports on the air, we have Cardinals baseball. They'll be coming away from Los Angeles, taking on the Dodgers game two of the season. 8-15 pregame, 9-20 first pitch. You'll hear it on 102.1 KTUI-FM. That's your look at sports from the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio on this Friday. Have a great weekend, everybody. This is Bobby D. Come join us at our Seidenstruger Nobi Partners Spring Open House April 5th and 6th at our Union dealership and get in the yellow seat. We have event-only specials and you can save big on our John Deere compact tractors. Take advantage of 0% financing for 84 months with zero down. Plus save up to an additional $2,500 on model year 23 compact tractors. Visit SNPartners.com for more information. Offer valid through 4-6-2024. Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. <laughs> All right, it's uh, 23 minutes away from the hour of 8 o'clock. Uh, Bobby D. here at the Sullivan Bank Studios of uh, KTUI Radio. And the uh, the twins are back with me today, hey, Mike hey. and John. Hey, hey, hey look hey, at Sam. John. He got all dressed up yeah, today. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm tired of I'm tired of doing this stuff. I have to work, you know. Yeah. I had to hey, Sam's here. Say something, Sam. Hello. Something. See, see <laughs> Sam, has he been on the air yet? Uh, he, he he stepped in yesterday and thanked everybody for. He sounds you know, fine things, to so. me. I'm I'm ready for him to take over. I think he needs. He's to, as ugly as, as to, normal though. Yeah, he needs to take over. He's got a little bit of face problem, but he's fine. He's walking around. He's talking, doing a lot better than most people do with a stroke i'll tell you that right now so he's good and they even got the wave and they're <laughs> and they're gonna uh a week from saturday right sam a week from tom tomorrow I, was, I read it wrong a week from tomorrow is going to be wilma's uh um, service and yeah. from two until four o'clock yeah. a week from tomorrow so that we're waiting for the <laughs> updated uh stuff from the funeral home that but, uh, uh, you know, I want to talk about something oh, before we get started. Oh, here we go. Not, not you. We'll talk oh, no. about what I did, though, in a minute. <laughs> but, you know, I think they spent a million dollars a mile for that cable on Interstate 44, <laughs> yeah. and it won't stop crap. And when they put it in there, I told my wife, that will not stop a tractor trailer. Well, we had a woman killed the other day yeah. because it didn't stop well, it. They, uh, and we had another crossover. Several of them. With, 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 you know, that uh, I don't think they died from that one. But, you know, those crossovers, you, you're driving down the road minding your own business. 
you're uh, 10 seconds either direction, you're not hit. Maybe well, somebody else you, is, but you know, you know that's it's, just, it's, it's terrible. The trucks getting crazy. Well, there are more trucks now than there ever have been. You know, and, you and say that, and I, I came back, Nancy and I came back from, I don't know where we were at, someplace at St. Clair, and, and I uh, started counting trucks. How many trucks you think, now that we were going west and they were going east, so I just counted mm. the eastbound trucks. How many from the St. Clair exit to the Sullivan exit? Oh, hundreds. 147. Yeah. In, in, in what, a 15 minute it's or crazy. 15 mile drive? So, so that, you know, that crossover can be stopped. They can't with that little cable that's not higher than your knees, but yep. it, it could be stopped. And, and the other thing, my wife came up with something that says, uh, you know, how you, all these people, not all of them, but some people, they get old or disoriented or drunk and they go the wrong way on the interstate off of an overpass. Yeah. She says, put those things up on those overpass exits like they have in, uh, it, like they have. In some parking lots, you're not supposed to enter. Your tires will be oh, flat. Oh, tires blow out? You yeah. go the wrong direction, your tires yeah. are going to go flat. Oh, yeah, the uh, the spikes. Yeah. That, when you go you're the going, right. yeah, they're angled. Yeah. So when you're going the right way, they, they just go push down. you down. Yeah. You go the wrong yeah, way, yeah, yeah. that'll stop that. Well, here's, and here's I thought, how you, yeah, there you go. Here's yeah. how you stop that crossover, but it'd be expensive. First of all, they probably need to put another lane between uh, Sullivan absolutely. and, just and well, St. Well, they're talking about doing it all the way across the state. All the way, yeah. But then you put those concrete barriers up there. Now, I know it's going to be expensive. Well, here's the thing. <clears throat> I can remember back, and I did a little bit of looking up on this, because they, they've got those barriers up where they've got it in the construction zone between right. St. James and Rolla, yeah. where they've got you know the, the, the barriers up over there. You have almost as many fatal accidents from a truck hitting that concrete barrier me the concrete barrier and then coming back over and then running over a car or somebody running up underneath it or another truck hitting it or yeah. something like it you have almost as many fatal accidents doing that or serious accidents as you would with the cable barrier because a lot of times it because of the you know, like soft ground and stuff yes a, a lot of times they'll what you know they'll get in there the tires will dig in they'll they'll fall over uh there's there's areas you know and a lot of it has to do with how the the elevation mm. you know there's areas where it's not real deep right down there and if they don't have to go down in that dip and lose momentum then they just shoot right well, through it and like this guy did down here i don't know what the answer is but i know we paid a fortune for those cables across the yeah. country and, and they're all across <clears throat> the country so well and, and the, the problem is if somebody has a wreck in there they're responsible for their insurance company is responsible for fixing, fixing those. That, oh yeah, and but it takes them. You know, they they wait until they've got several miles of it to do before they go fix them, and then so you have no barrier there whatsoever for an extended period of time. Well, you know, the, and those those cables probably do stop a lot of cars and oh, they'll stop cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah but they they're, not they're, like they're not going to stop. They're not going to. And stop those, those truckers, truckers are get. Nancy and I will leave for Pennsylvania. Uh, we're going to leave Wednesday morning. We'll leave at three o'clock in the morning, and we'll be the only car on the road. Yep. And it'll oh, yeah, be I, full of yeah. trucks the whole way. Yeah, they, I see that see. coming to work. But, but you got to have yeah. it. Yeah. You know, Norman told me one time if they took barges off the Mississippi River, it it it'd add something like thirty-six thousand trucks so, a day so to, yeah. the, Why? to the interstate. Well, and, so. and trains too. Well, it's so, got to yeah. be. They're not because I guess they're not hauling stuff on trains anymore. Or oh not yeah, absolutely. Whenever I went, we we just came back from crossing, you know, across Arizona where you can mm -hmm. see forever. There's trains that they would have. One train had over 200 cars on it, and they had uh, like a, a box that's on a truck stacked too high. And you'd see Amazon, you'd well, see them all true. on, yeah. those, on yeah. those trains. All the intermodal. But they're all, they're what they call that stuff that's shipped. And from they overseas. would be, and they not one train. They'd be 10 trains because they'd be pulled over, letting them by. We'd, I mean, in, in a short distance, you'd see 10 or 15 trains. So they're using trains, but they a train can't get you from. Uh, from this place in St. Louis or this place in St. Louis or this don't place get you to the door of the no, you front got door of the business. So yeah. they've got to have those. So yeah. Mike and I went out to Holy Martyrs. You know, I volunteered Mike to help me cut cut down a tree, and my my wife volunteered me to cut down the tree, and then I volunteered Mike to help me. And I, I'm lucky yeah, I didn't get it on yeah. this. Yeah, and I'm usually yeah, pretty, been working. <laughs> I'm usually pretty good. You know, I cut a notch out and I dropped the tree. Oh, and, yeah, it's a gust and, of wind. And, and no, it wasn't. It was anyway. So I cut this tree down. And it goes. I go. It's going the wrong way, Mike. Get out of the way. It went. It went uh, not exactly the wrong way, but it went sideways. It went, yeah. It went, it went sideways on me. And Mike said, well, we won't tell anybody. I go, I tell everything on myself. <laughs> now, I usually cut it. So I'm sitting there cutting up the limbs, and Mike's cutting up the limbs. And I'm thinking, what did I do wrong? I looked over that. And I said, well, I cut it too short. Mike goes, well, I saw you doing it. I said, well, you should have told me. I was bent over. You know, you cut a notch out, and then you cut into the notch. And then it falls over. 
and I've done a lot. Mike can tell you, yeah. I've done a lot with a lot bigger trees than that. Well, I cut below the notch. Well, that was real stupid. <laughs> well, I saw him doing so, it, and I thought, I said, well, I'm not going to say anything. He must have a reason for it that you know, I didn't realize. <laughs> My reason I was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't hit Mr. anything. Mr. Master saw well, it. Well, it didn't hit anything. Because why? Because we took, well, the priest uh, p- pulls up there and parks on the sidewalk, so we went in and got him. I went and got him to move it, and I said, I could probably cut it down. Mike goes, well, maybe we shouldn't. No, okay, we'll wait. Good thing we didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Good. He'd have been looking for a new car. He's an interesting get guy. I was telling Sam, you guys ought to have him on. He's an interesting guy. He used to, he used to, uh, when he was young, did a radio show on the East Coast, yeah, um, classical music. I think he told my wife. But anyway, he he uh, is a triplet, and he's a priest. He's converted. And he was uh, born Jewish. I was going to say, so, and he's Jewish too. So, so, so he's, yeah, he's interesting. And some of the, some of the some of his uh, sermons are pretty interesting because he throws in. Some of the things I didn't know what meant. Yeah, what th- exactly. some things in the Bible meant, but he's got the Jewish perspective oh, yeah, on what yeah. it meant. So anyway, it'd be an interesting interview. This is Good Friday, by the way. Yes, it is. And as a kid, and uh, I always wondered what was so good about it because you know Jesus died, but now as you grow older, you understand why that was good. But still, this is uh, Good Friday. So. Yeah, and it's Red Friday. Remember well, yeah, everyone deployed. I, I used to always wear red, and I forgot yeah, to. I, wait, wait, I got a red phone. Uh, My underwear's red. Do you want to see it? No, no. no we'll just uh, <laughs> turn the cameras off. Yeah, yeah, we, I, I can show you that. Just, just stay in the seat. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is something uh, that applies to you guys, I guess. Knights of Columbus Founders Day. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah that's well, what it is. We should be celebrating. We probably got an yeah. email telling us that yeah. Yeah. today. But, uh, they, you know, they used to. You ought to have the, a fish fry in honor. Well, they, I was going to say they used to do the fish fry <laughs> on Friday, and we had a priest uh, several years ago showed up and said, "No." That's a day of fasting, fasting for Catholic. Yeah. And, and fa- fasting for most Catholics, if you, at our age, you don't have to fast. Right. Except for my wife says we do. But uh, fa- she, you know her. Yeah. She's always right. Fa- fasting is not, you know, when I think of fasting, I think of not eating at not all. Not eating at all, right. And fasting for Catholics was what? Two small meals and one normal meal. And one meal. normal meal, yeah. Yeah, that's called fasting. So, well, that's... Uh, I can live with that definition. Well, <laughs> well I should live with that every day. Probably. Yeah, probably. All you do, yeah. all yeah. you have to do is eat great eat eat great big the night before and call it a normal meal and then you're yeah. good then you're good right yeah there's always a way yeah, around yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. i'll say who's there who's there to but, uh, determine what is a small meal and what is a normal that's meal. what i mean yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah there we go I, so so yeah. that's what the uh catholics are supposed to do today yeah okay on this good friday so i heard you're gonna go watch the the sunset uh next week yeah, a week from I think it's a week from Monday, and yeah, the eighth, yeah, eight, eight, well, or something. Yeah, well, the, I'm taking my grandson. My wife threw a fit out of this too. I'm taking him out of school. He's in seventh grade, and I'm taking him with me and her to Farmington because that's where the totality is supposed to be down in that area. And yeah, the greatest, I said, greatest length I said, of totality. Yeah. The only people that remember you after you die are your grandkids. You know, unless you live long enough to have great grandkids. Yeah. Which you know that ain't gonna happen with me. But anyway. Uh, so, you know, when he's 70 years old, he'll say, oh, I saw that with my grandpa. Yeah. And so is that better than a one day of school? And he never misses. So, yeah, I'm taking him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know a lot of schools down there are, are closing. Like they yeah, did they're here. closing the, like they did when it was here 2017. Years ago. Yeah. It, 2017, it yeah. closed here, and we had all the grandkids over to the house and yeah. watched it. But they're all got bigger now. Yeah, I, yeah the they ones don't that remember are, that far back. The ones that are, yeah, he, <laughs> they remember, but the ones that are small enough to want to go, you know, are... Uh, in Pennsylvania and California, yeah. except for John Boy. Yeah. So. yeah I, I think my wife was talking about going down there, but I think she's just about talked herself out of it. She's, Why? Well, it's not going to happen in her lifetime again. Well, it's already happened once. I mean, what? we saw it once. But <laughs> <laughs> well, that's but, what that's what John Boy tells me. Gramps, you're you're um, you're 69 years old. I've seen it as much as you have. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah. I go, yeah. But uh, I, she's I, she says she's, in fact she just told me this yesterday. Now this may change by uh-huh. you know what a week from Monday. By the time or you get home. Is. Yeah, by the time I get home too. <laughs> but she said uh, she says you know it's only eight minutes. And I says, yeah, but... Okay, you tell her to follow us down, because, you know, I don't think we can all... Maybe we can all fit in the same car. We'll go down, and I'll let her take me out to eat. And then, okay. then it'll last longer yeah. than that. Yeah, then it'll Make last a day longer of it. than yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It'll last longer than the eight minutes. You, know, you talk about going down there and eating. We we went down... Uh, my wife had a an aunt that passed away, I don't know, a few months ago, a month ago. And we went down to their service... And and I don't remember the name of the town. It was like Oak Hill or something. It's somewhere around Cape. Uh, yeah, Cape there's an Oak Jackson. Hill. Is that right, Oak mm-hmm. Hill? 
There's a restaurant there that has got some of the best fried chicken I've ever eaten. It and it's a dump, really isn't it? Good. Oh, yeah. They're it's, always it's just, a dump, they're and they're the best the I mean, oh, it, 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 I wouldn't call it a dump, but it's no. it's old, and it's yeah. but it's just out in the middle of nowhere. Hey. The town is 200-some-odd people. Nancy and I go to those places instead of change yeah. when we're gone. But we we did Kentucky Tour, Kentucky Chicken Tour. Oh, really? And uh, the, the best place we ate is now closed, but it had made one of the books she was reading. And it was it was a dump. In the bathroom, it said, don't put your paper in the oh. toilet. <laughs> <laughs> made me i didn't go to the bathroom so, so i mean that's yeah, the kind of place yeah. it was best fried chicken well, i'd ever yeah. had and in this my was, life and the better better best part of this whole deal is it was a, a buffet all you can eat fried chicken oh, I see. oh it was my, it my, was my all out there my all you can eat is not all very much unless i can stay for seven hours yeah because well, i yeah. eat a piece and then i have to wait because yeah. yeah that's true <laughs> but yeah. But, but you talk about the bathroom. This in this place, you had to take a step up to get into the bathroom. Oh, really? So yeah. Well, that's a throne. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It was a throne. Yeah. yeah. The, the, I yeah. think that's where that definition came that's from. A, the, yeah. They made it into a throne. So yesterday we had uh, one president of the United States, two former presidents of the United States, uh, in in Clinton and o, and Obama, and uh, Biden being the well, president, they went and celebrated yesterday in New York and raised uh, what was it, fifty-seven, thirty-seven million dollars or something for his campaign. Yeah. But one former president named Donald Trump went to the funeral of that police officer. Um, it was a visitation of the police officer. He had called the family and talked to him, and they applauded him when he came in. And one of the policemen said they'd never seen that before. But they applauded him, uh, President Trump for coming in. Um, and, you know, he talked about crime in New York City and what they need to do. That guy had 21 different arrests. He, and, and the f- only thing, the only thing, of course, I'm an NRA member, got to put it out there. But the only thing they talked about from the White House was gun control. Well, that idiot that shot him was using an illegal gun because he's a felon, been in prison for 10 years at one point, and wasn't allowed to have a gun. So what good would it have done to have more gun control? Well, they, their gun control is taking all the guns oh, out of the hands of citizens. Absolutely away from yes, all of us. Yes, and if you come, just like, if you come, Just like some other uh, former <coughs> rulers of other countries yeah. who I won't mention, but it was in Germany. Yeah, well, and you know they, and when they, and, and you'll say them go in and they'll take somebody's guns and they'll say, I have a daughter-in-law who's from Australia, and they'll take somebody's guns and and so I took her to my basement and said, you ever hear about, uh, you know, they come in and they took somebody's guns it's so bad because he had a thousand rounds of ammunition. And she goes, yeah, and I opened my thing and go, there's a thousand, there's a thousand, there's a thousand, because <laughs> yeah. every time they had twenty-two shells, you know, any place I bought them and, you know, five hundred, five hundred fifty in a box. Two boxes, you got a thousand rounds. It doesn't mean you're a murderer or that you've got guns illegally. Yeah. But you know, th- but that's the first thing they want to do. So I, I, I really appreciated President Trump. Yeah. Ta- well, calling that family, thanking yeah. them for the service, saying that they'd be with them, and then saying, "We're going to make police officers." Because I have a son that's a police officer. We're going to make police officers great again. Basically, is what he's saying. Well, and I thought a couple things I thought in, found interesting about that. He made a donation. They've got a thing like Backstoppers in St. Louis. Yep, yep. He made a donation to that, and the that that organization then turned around and paid off that uh, yeah. the family's mortgage. And you know they've got the he didn't do it directly to them, but right. he, you know through this organization well, he did. And then they've so got they the, write off his taxes. They've, yeah, got right. the, they've got the other thing called turn, Tunnel to Towers. Which, yeah, that's which that's what it was. I tunnel think, yeah. to Towers, and and uh, you know I don't like to talk what we donate to, but I wish people would donate to that because we donate every month. It's it's uh, I think eleven dollars a month they want you to donate. We donate every month that because I won't, I won't miss that eleven bucks. And that is a because not on Tunnel to Tower, uh, the guy that started its brother was killed in the World Trade Center. Yeah. But they also help anybody in the military. They pay off their loans. They, if if somebody gets killed, if an officer gets killed, they put up uh, military people who are handicapped in homes that they can handle. Yeah. It's a great organization. 
and you know i really do wish people just take the time and uh, donate to yeah that i think that's 100 yeah. percent of it goes yeah i, mean, I think that's what he donated to was tunnel yeah, yeah it all it all goes yeah. to it so yeah. well you know and the fact that he called and and yes. told them they may have said hey you know it might be a circus if you show up or something well that, i think he was invited but, yes oh was he invited yes. oh i didn't realize yes that. Uh, he so, okay. he had called and talked to the family he, before he received he spent, an invitation he spent an hour on the phone with them yeah really said yeah. he would like to come you know he's from there He's from that, yeah. what was it, the Bronx or whatever it was. He's yeah. from there. His dad made money there. He knew a lot of people there, and he's, and they said, we want you here. But they also got on uh, and said, we don't want people, we don't want, we don't want you city council people coming here no. that, that went after the police. We don't yeah. want you people here. Yeah. So. It was, I found it interesting that the uh, New York police union told their officers not to stand behind Trump because they felt it might make a political statement of support. Well, they had they had a, a, a depart, couple of departments from out on Long Island that were there and in support. They will they went in and stood behind. They stood him. behind him. I saw him. Yeah, they there. went they yeah. went and stood behind him. And, and, you know, unfortunately, it's just kind of the way the times. Yeah. I understand the reasoning behind that. That you know they. They have to with the way the situation is in New York. Exactly, they've got to kind of play the middle of the road because they're not catching any breaks. Uh, but that's just it's well, you know the they, overall picture. That's kind of sad. And they said they said it was political, but everybody that I hear talking about it is saying it was not a political move. Yes, it was probably good politically for Donald Trump, but this is something Trump does. You know, this it's, is something. It's, it's well, not not him. No, I'm just talking no, about. No, the, no, I'm I was talking about the police officer. Yeah, I understand what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of people were saying, "Oh, Trump did it for political reasons." No. He, well, this is what he does. It, it's he sad, does it. though, that you have, to, you have to take that into consideration. I mean, I would have not even thought about it, probably. you know. But now after you say it, it's like, yeah, you know, I can see where a lot of people would say he just did it for political reasons or the, or the, the cops are now supporting you know, Donald well, and Trump. They, but that's just they, it's and, crazy we have to do that. And some of those things that, well, you know, the president's busy and these other guys are busy. Donald Trump didn't have this planned last week. No. Nobody knew it until this officer was killed on Monday. He didn't have it planned he, two days ago. He, yeah. he, he paid the money to fly from, you know, it cost him to fly that jet. He flew from flew from Florida up here to do that, uh, to New York to do that. So He probably yeah. took a commercial flight, don't you think? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no? No. Uh, he's, I would he's think not. not. I no. thought it was pretty You know, you yeah. have to wonder when was the last time you think he was on a commercial airplane, any of those guys. Uh, uh, I don't, his daughter was not too long ago. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. she got had pictures of it. She, she'll, uh, she she'll took f- a, the one that was uh, what was his daughter-in-law. No, his daughter actually okay. took one with her. Okay. And and, uh, and people people got why is she flying on here when she could fly? Well, because you know her and her husband went on vacation. They flew. Yeah. Flew, and yeah. they didn't even fly, fly first ca- class. It's been about three oh, years ago. No, they, you know. And here's the thing that could that's happen. Expensive. I could be on that plane. <laughs> And I wouldn't even, I mean, I'd recognize Donald Trump, but I wouldn't recognize no. any of his kids. No, or, but you I'd know, probably recognize you know, Don Jr. You know why rich know people have money? Because they don't blow it. Well, that's true. The, if yeah. they buy something, it's going to be worth something, like Mar Largo. You know, it's going to be worth something someday. Well, so. well it's not it, It's not worth what it, uh, what it should be, according to the judge <laughs> yeah. in New York. Uh, yeah, yeah that, that, gonna that's, th- of course, well, you know, that's... They're going to uh, throw some stuff out, I think. No, I saw where the, uh, the Bitcoin boy... That made all the oh, money. Yeah, yeah Friedman. He uh, went to yeah. jail. Yeah, twenty-five years, and he could have got two hundred and something years. Uh, and he, so, but you know, I, I thought it was funny. It's because he's on a vegan diet, and because all these other stuff is why he did this stuff. Well, <laughs> when you're a billionaire, it's okay to be on a vegan diet, but when you want to stay out of jail, it was the diet that caused it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Can't, yeah. can't, can't oh, go to sure. jail. Can't go to yeah. jail for that. Because. <laughs> so now here's my question: Are, are they now. going to be able to make? I have to make him special food no, now that he's. I don't think so. I think oh, that's really? part of his argument. Yeah, really? I don't think so. But well, I don't know the way they're they're pretty now. If he wants a sex change operation, they can handle. Oh yeah, that. they'll do that for free. Yeah, I would like to say they're getting pretty accommodating in prison. Yeah, I anymore. think so too. Uh, yeah, you know because oh, I, well, let's not even go down that road. Uh, we talked earlier about uh, tractor trailer accidents, and I think I think this is another. It's an overturned vehicle. Uh, I don't know if this is cleared up yet. I haven't checked uh, X to see if there's an update. Eastbound 44 closed at mile marker 188 due to an overturned vehicle. That's in the construction zone uh, before you get to the hi- Highway V there where the industrial park is at Rolla. Gosh, that's been a mess. Oh, no, don't, don't even get me started on that right no. now. 
I, I, we go the back way. I, I have gone, I have been to Rolla twice on the interstate, maybe three times since that has started. We always go the outer road, go the back way. That's what my daughter was doing when she was, yeah. she was driving there. Yeah, uh, and now they've got 63 <laughs> closed in the middle of town by oh, the university. Really? Yeah, well, they, they're building where they, where they put the new uh, entrance the, off of uh, 185 exit. That's supposed to be the new uh, the new entry to the campus. Uh-huh. They put that road into that roundabout on 63. Well, just north of that, there was a tunnel that kids could use it, to get from that side, side because the other. used to have the... Uh, I remember that. They yeah. had married student housing, and uh-huh. you know, we had some other stuff over there in the parking lot. They had a little narrow tunnel that you could walk under. Well, now with all this new construction this new entry area to that's supposed to be all fancied up for the university they're putting a bigger wider tunnel underneath there so they've got 63 closed from up by uh the catholic church up you know up that street uh-huh. up there uh it's closed from there down to the roundabout and uh, they're they're digging underneath there 24 <laughs> 7 to, to put that tunnel in you ever see that guy in the roundabout that just looks like he's lost you that's me yeah yeah, yeah. I, I hate roundabouts yeah you know and, 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 I, I agree. And, you know, I get most of them right, but every once in a while I think. But, you know, the one roundabout that I've seen that makes the most sense to me, and, and it really was needed, was the one that you were, well, I can't say ran in, but walked in. I mean, that one makes sense. What do you mean? Five I was going full speed yeah. in my underwear, my in long jump. Underwear, yeah. You know well, that that's out there? I'm sorry? It's out there on YouTube still. Oh, is yeah. Is it really? Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, it is. Somebody told me that, so I looked it up, and there I am, yep. running you know, in my that, underwear. That roundabout made some sense, because what was there, like five roads all coming in there? Yeah, I yeah, mean, it was yeah, a real was, mess, yeah, and at least but, that uh, one made some sense. Yeah. All right. Well, we're uh, coming up on news time, guys, so we'll take a bit of a break. We'll go to news. We'll come back, visit with John and Mike again after the uh, news break. This is KTUI 1560 AM Sullivan, Missouri. You can pick us up uh, here on the morning show on YouTube. Just go to YouTube, search for KTUI Live. You can also get us on the TuneIn app at KTUI-AM. It is 8 o'clock. We've got news from USA, Missouri Net, our local news. It's all coming up next, 8 o'clock. Let's check out the world national news from USA. USA News. I'm Ryan Daniels. Russia has blocked a United Nations panel of experts from overseeing North Korea's nuclear weapons program. Thursday, Russia vetoed the annual renewal of sanctions monitoring on North Korea, while China opted to abstain from the vote. State Department spokesman Matthew Miller described this move as indicative of increased cooperation between Russia and North Korea. U.S. officials have raised concerns, alleging North Korea is providing weapons to Russia in its war with Ukraine. Texas Republican Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick says the Biden administration is turning its back on the Lone Star State and Americans. He tells Fox Business he believes the new law, SB4, in Texas will be upheld, allowing Texas state authorities to arrest those spotted or suspected of crossing the border illegally. It will eventually end up at the steps of the Supreme Court for the final decision, and I believe they will say we are clearly being invaded. Everyone in America knows we're being invaded. The law remains held up in the courts now as the White House sues against it. Biden administration attorneys argue the state of Texas has no authority to enforce federal immigration law. The president of Ukraine urging Congress to deliver critical aid to Kyiv in its war with Russia. President Zelensky briefed House Speaker Mike Johnson on the battlefield situation on Thursday, warning of Ukraine's dwindling resources and Russia's advances. He said quick passage of aid by Congress is vital. The Senate last month passed a bipartisan national security measure that includes funds for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan, although the House has yet to take it up. SpaceX delaying their Falcon 9 rocket launch. The launch initially set for Thursday evening out of California was pushed until at least Friday afternoon. The Falcon 9 rocket will launch 22 Starlink satellites into orbit. This is USA News. Hey, here's a question. After you wear your clothes, you toss them in the washing machine, right? Nobody wants to wear dirty clothes. So how come you don't throw your shoes in the washing machine when they get dirty? I mean, come on. Your shoes are touching the filthy ground all day long. Gross. Well, with Skechers... You can, because most Skechers are machine washable. That's right. Skechers are specially made so you can toss them right in the washing machine and keep them clean and looking new. And when they look new, you can confidently wear them longer. That's less shoes you're going to want to throw away, which means less waste. And it'll save you tons of dough. I love that. 
Plus, machine washable Skechers are for the whole family, men, women, and kids. So when your kids get their shoes dirty, oh, and we know they will, just wash them. Brilliant! And even our latest technology, new hands-free Skechers slip-ins are washable. You just step right in and go without bending down or even touching your shoes. So give your Skechers the same treatment you give your clothes. Just toss them in the washing machine and keep them looking brand spanking new. Find machine washable Skechers at a Skechers store, Skechers.com, or wherever stylish footwear happens to be sold. Donald Trump paying his respects in the wake of a New York City police officer's death at the hands of a suspect during a routine traffic stop. It happened Monday in Queens, leaving 31-year-old NYPD officer Jonathan Dillard dead. Trump attending his wake on Thursday, speaking briefly to reporters afterward, saying he wants law and order. 21 times arrested, this thug, and uh, the person in the car with him was arrested many times. And they don't learn because they don't respect. The man accused of fatally shooting Diller has been charged with first-degree murder of police officer and other charges. President Biden being criticized by Republicans for attending a fundraiser in New York. Meanwhile, Biden and First Lady Jill Biden offering their condolences to victims in the wake of a stabbing spree that happened in Illinois this week. It was in Rockford, about 60 miles northwest of Chicago, on Wednesday. Four people died and seven were hurt. One very highly regarded Brit in Hollywood will now have a surname. Literally, Oppenheimer and Batman director Christopher Nolan is being knighted by King Charles in the UK. He'll now be called Sir Christopher Nolan. His wife and producing partner will also become Dame Emma Thomas. This comes on the coattails of Oppenheimer's critical acclaim in the box office and its success at the Oscars. King Charles is also bestowing the honor upon Ted Sarandos, the CEO of Netflix. Sir Ted. I'm Ryan Daniels, USA News. Hi, I'm Ronnie Deutsch, and if you or your business owe money to the IRS, I've got great news for you. Tax laws have changed. Billions of dollars are earmarked for IRS Fresh Start programs. And if you qualify, you can literally save tens of thousands of dollars. Listen, I know what you're going through. Call me if you want to speak with a tax attorney or tax professional for free. 800-284-9275. That's 800-284-9275. You deserve extraordinary care close to home. From primary care to advanced specialties right here in Sullivan and access to all that BJC Healthcare has to offer. We're here to provide the care you need. Missouri Baptist Sullivan Hospital and BJC Healthcare. Care that is comprehensive, coordinated, and completely about you. Learn more at MissouriBaptistSullivan.org. With News on Missouri Net, I'm Marshall Griffin. The Senate has given initial approval to legislation that would create a prescribed pediatric extended care center license. The bill from Chillicothe Republican Rusty Black focuses on providing specialized care for children with complex medical needs. Currently, kids with medical complexities can receive private nursing, but... While this helps some children, for others, this costs them opportunities to socialize with other children. And for parents, this can be burdensome to schedule and potentially require parents to stay home with their children instead of going to work due to the lack of available nursing staff. A movie about a burn victim recovering from near-fatal injuries is the first film produced with funding from the Show Mo Film Tax Credit. On Fire received $2.75 million in tax credits from the Show Mo Tax Credit Program. And someone in central Missouri's Callaway County is nearly $96,000 richer after buying a Missouri Lottery Club Kino ticket. This is Missouri now. I spy something yellow. Is it a car? No. Is it a building? Nope. What is it? It's that yellow post over there. What is that? Well, that's a pipeline marker used to show the general location of a pipeline and provides emergency contact information on it. This message is from Mango, Missouri's Association of Natural Gas Operators, letting you know to keep an eye out for pipeline markers. In Iraq, our truck hit a roadside bomb. I had about 16 surgeries on my hand so that I could regain function. And when I came home, I needed a new roof due to a storm. And I was about to lose homeowner's insurance as well. I applied for Operation Homefront Critical Financial Assistance Program. And it's good to know that when we come home, there are people who are there that care about us. Operation Homefront, they've really been a blessing. Visit OperationHomefront.org to learn more. 
earn 5.51 annual percentage yield on a seven-month CD at Sullivan Bank. Use our CD calculator on SullivanBank.com and see how much you could earn. Experience great rates and a step up in service. We are waiting to greet you with a smile. Annual percentage yield of 5.51 APY is accurate as of December 26, 2023. $1,000 minimum balance required to earn stated APY. Penalty may be imposed for early withdrawal, which will reduce earnings on the account. Interest compounded and credited quarterly. Rate subject to change at any time. Available at all locations. New Testament Baptist Church in Sullivan is starting a new addiction recovery ministry called Life Issues. It's a biblical approach to the 12 steps, bringing scriptural principles into personal focus and making them come alive for transformational living. Whether you struggle with addictions, food, depression, anxiety, or relationships, you'll be encouraged to see how others have found a new way of life with hope for the future through this program. Life Issues will meet weekly on Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. at New Testament Baptist Church. You're not alone. To find out more, contact New Testament Baptist Church at 573-468-3334. Looking at local news from the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio on this Friday, the Missouri State Highway Patrol reported an arrest at 10.16 p.m. Thursday in Crawford County. 39-year-old Joseph M. Yarrow of Cuba was arrested on patrol charge of DWI. He was processed and released. At 6.06 p.m. Thursday in Franklin County, 26-year-old Danny I. Lopez Hernandez of St. Charles was arrested on a patrol charge for driving while intoxicated. He was taken to the Franklin County Adult Detention Facility and placed on 12-hour hold. At 1.50 a.m. Thursday in Boone County, 23-year-old Nicholas J. Reeves of Sullivan was arrested for driving while intoxicated. He was released on summons. The Franklin County Government Center, County Administrative Offices, Historic Courthouse, Health Department, and Highway Department will be closed today in observance of Good Friday. The Sheriff's Department will remain open as they are 24 hours every day. Most city, and county, and state offices and uh, most federal offices are closed today for the Good Friday holiday. Some things coming up around the area today. The Missouri Baptist Sullivan Hospital Auxiliary having a bake sale fundraiser from 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. today. Tables are located near the outpatient entrance. It's cash or credit only. Serve Pro of Franklin County sponsoring an American Red Cross blood drive in the training room at number 2 Truman Court in Union. That'll run from 1 until 5 p.m. today. You can visit redcrossblood.org, enter SERVPRO, S-E-R-V-P-R-O, to schedule an appointment. The second annual Chief Mason Griffith Easter Parade going on in Rosebud, sponsored by the Rosebud Committee Park Association and the Police Department. That will get underway at 5.30 this evening. Parade lineup will be at 4.30 at the Rosebud RV Park facing Rosebud Avenue. The parade will start at 5.30. Bring out the kids, uh, make sure they bring an Easter basket to load up on candy. They'll have a candy cannon at 6.30 after the parade. You're invited to bring your group's decorated vehicles, floats, UTVs, first responder vehicles, etc. to join the fun. Please bring your own candy to throw out. No plastic eggs. The famous park fish fry will be going on from 4 till 7 p.m. as well, and they are accepting donations for the event. Some church services around the area tonight. New Testament Baptist Church in Sullivan having Good Friday services at 7 o'clock tonight at the church. They're located at 962 North Church Street in Sullivan. And they're going to have uh, Sunday morning services with a choir performance at 10, followed by an Easter egg hunt at the church. Temple Baptist Church in Sullivan having a Good Friday worship service at 7 o'clock tonight. All are invited. The Victorian Place of Cuba is sponsoring a benefit adult after dark Easter egg hunt tonight. Food and drinks are provided in exchange for a donation to Longest Day, which is an organization that raises funds and awareness for the care, support, and research efforts of the Alzheimer's Association. Food will be served starting at 6. The egg hunt should begin after dark at about 7.30. Make sure you bring your flashlights, headlamps, or phones. MoDOT has scheduled road work for Highway 28 in the Owensville area. Milling transitions began last night by Capital Paving. Should be complete around April 1st. After that, the paving work should start. They will be working at night, so there will be no daytime closures, but use caution while driving through those work zones. With the municipal elections coming up next Tuesday, April the 2nd, the Gasconade and Franklin County Courthouses will be open on Saturday for absentee voting. The Franklin County Courthouse at 401 East Main Street, room 100A, will be open from 8 a.m. until 12 noon. 
The Gascony County Courthouse at 119 East 1st Street is open from 8 until 1.30. It'll all be open during regular hours on Monday for absentee voting. In Crawford County, you must vote at the Crawford County Courthouse and in Washington County as well. Hours there are 8 to 4.30 and they'll be doing that on Monday. Attention Solvent School District parents, if you have a child that will be five years of age before July 31st of this year, uh, you are requested to come to the Solvent Primary School on April 4th for kindergarten registration from 7.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. They will need your child's shot record and birth certificate. From the parents, they'll need a copy of your driver's license and proof of residency such as an electric bill or rental agreement. If you have any questions, you can call the Sullivan Primary School office at 573-468-5171, option 4. The St. Clair R13 Board of Education pleased to announce that Mrs. Samantha Tottisman has been hired as the new Edgar Murray Elementary School Assistant Principal. Congratulations to Mrs. Tottisman as she continues her commitment to excellence in education. The Sullivan City Council will be meeting next Tuesday at 7 o'clock at City Hall, 210 West Washington. Meeting will come to order at 7 o'clock. Under committee reports, Planning and Zoning has scheduled a public hearing for April the 9th for an annexation proposal at 1233 Thatcher Road. We'll also have a report from the Board of Adjustment. There are no ordinances on the agenda at this time. There is a closed session scheduled for real estate litigation, personnel, and contractual negotiations. The public is invited to attend the open meeting 7 o'clock next Tuesday, April 2nd at Sullivan City Hall, 210 West Washington. That's a look at your local reported news from the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio on this Friday. Have a great weekend, everybody. This is Bobby D. Do you have a guy? Like your dad or grandpa had a guy. Something broke around the house you couldn't fix, Gramps would say, call my guy. He probably drove an old blue pickup, big tool chest in the back. Decades of calluses on strong hands. Name on his shirt like Don or Ed or Buddy. He just always seemed to know the best way to fix any problem. That's why Grandpa trusted him. There's not many of those guys around today. And no wonder, between taxes and technology, insurance and licensing, it's hard to be that guy and be competitive. Well, that's why this company started. We love what we do, and we still want to be that guy. Independent technicians, generations of combined experience, all joined together as one powerful team. Strength in numbers, you know. If you're ever stuck with a broken furnace or air conditioner, now you've got a guy. We're Level 9 Heating and Cooling. Level 9 HVAC.com. In our recent funeral announcements, Francis Ann Bell passed away Sunday, March 24th in St. Peter's at the age of 84. She is survived by her children, Larry Bell of St. Peter's and Deanna Bell of Belleville, Missouri, nine grandchildren, four great-grandchildren, numerous cousins, and other relatives. Funeral services for Francis Bell will be held at 11 o'clock this morning at the Concordia Lutheran Church in Bourbon. In Earnment will follow a Bourbon Cemetery. Cremation has taken place. There will be a visitation from 9.30 a.m. until services at 11 at the church. All arrangements are under the care of the Eaton Funeral Home and Cremation Center of Sullivan for Francis Bell. Sharon Lee Bender, née Skelton of St. Clair, passed away Saturday, March 23rd at the age of 80. She is survived by her husband, Lee Bender of St. Clair, two sons, Ray Luthauser Jr. and wife Carrie of Cedar Hill, and Steve Luthauser and wife Lynn of Cedar Hill, five daughters, Michelle Reisner and significant other Tony Story of St. Clair, Tamara Lister and husband John of St. Clair, Kathy Gentner and husband Will of Hallsville, Jeanette Bender of Fenton, and Julie Fisher and husband Christopher of Florissant. 19 grandchildren, 26 great-grandchildren, other relatives, and many friends. Funeral services for Sharon Bender will be held at 1 o'clock this afternoon at the Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair with burial in Crestview Memorial Park in St. Clair. Visitation for Sharon Bender will be held from 10 this morning until services at 1 this afternoon at the Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair. Benjamin Adam Bach of Union passed away Monday, March 25th at the age of 37. He is survived by his mother, Robin Schaefer Cutter of O'Fallon, and father, Ben Bach, and significant other, Rhonda Calkins of Rosebud, a brother, Alexander Bach, and wife, Jessie of Cornelius, North Carolina. Funeral services for Adam Bach will be held Saturday at 10 a.m. at the Gotten Strader Chapel in Owensville. 
Burial will be at the Countryside Memorial Gardens. Visitation for Benjamin Adam Bach will be held from 4 until 8 o'clock tonight at the Gotten Strader Chapel in Owensville. Peggy J. Bryant of Bourbon passed away Sunday, March 24th in St. Louis at the age of 64. Peggy is survived by her husband, Leroy Bryant of Bourbon, three children, Billy Bryant and wife Cassie of Sullivan, Christina Britton and boyfriend Joseph Submiller of Union, and Amanda Webb and husband Staff Sergeant Shannon Michael Webb of Fort Hood, Texas. A bonus daughter, Shakita Cook and husband Stephan of St. Louis, 11 grandchildren, three great-grandchildren, her mother, Jean Smith of Stanton, two sisters, Kelly Pounds and husband Alan of Sullivan, and Tammy Shipman and husband Mark of St. James, many nieces, nephews, other relatives, and friends. Funeral services for Peggy Bryant will be held at 11 a.m. Saturday at the Oak Hill Free Will Baptist Church of Union. Interment will follow at the Smith Cemetery in Egger Springs. Visitation will be held from 9 a.m. till services at 11 on Saturday at the Oak Hill Free Will Baptist Church of Union. Memorial contributions may be made to the American Breast Cancer Society or St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in memory of Peggy Bryant. All arrangements are under the care and direction of the Eaton Funeral Home and Cremation Center of Sullivan. Ralph Willard Dulaney of Cuba passed away at his home on Saturday, March 23rd at the age of 85. Willard is survived by his wife, Frances of Cuba, his children, Cindy Radford of Steelville, Lori Dulaney and Ralph William Dulaney, both of San Antonio, Texas, Belinda Dulaney of Bernie, Texas, Brenda and husband David Mendoza, Lynn Copling, William and wife Karen Parkins, and Carrie Parkins, all of Cuba, a brother John and wife Linda Dulaney of St. Louis, brothers-in-law Ed and wife Penny Copling of Lebanon, Ray and wife Cheryl Copling of Cuba, Sisters-in-law, Mary Lou Delaney of Fredericktown, Margie and husband Tom Dean of Richland, Betty Bridgman of Chitopa, Kansas, and Rebecca Bryant of Steelville. Fourteen grandchildren, 21 great-grandchildren, many nieces, nephews, cousins, and friends. The family has chosen cremation as his final disposition. No services will be held at this time. All arrangements for Ralph Willard Dulaney are under the direction of the Hudson Funeral Home in Cuba. Your 401k is likely one of your most important assets, but it's only one part of a comprehensive retirement strategy. Edward Jones can help you understand how your retirement assets fit into your entire retirement picture so you can work toward meeting your unique retirement goals. Contact me, Donnie Greenwald, your Sullivan Edward Jones Financial Advisor at number 10 First Community Plaza in Sullivan. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Looking at sports on this Friday from the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio, the Cardinals opened their regular season on the road yesterday in Los Angeles against the Dodgers. Coming up short in a 7-1 score, here's Ricky Horton and John Rooney with the Redbird Recap. With Ricky Horton, I'm John Rooney. Victor Scott II made his Major League debut, got on on an error, and picked up his first Major League stolen base. Paul Goldschmidt had a 3-for-4 day, unfortunately. He had the only hits for the Cardinals as the Dodgers won 7-1. Tyler Glass now pitched very well for the Dodgers in picking up the victory. And the top of the Dodgers lineup, which we all know is going to be good, they were better than good yesterday with Mookie Betts homering, Freddie Freeman homering, and picking up an awful lot of hits, including Otani, who had a good day. But Miles Michaelis just did not have the start he wanted. Tyler Glass now did. Too many walks, too, for the Cardinals pitching staff that actually resulted in runs as well. And one of the bright spots, Matthew Libertor had a very fast eighth inning. And he looked sharp, too, throwing 97 miles an hour and showing his good curveball. We'll be on the air tonight from Dodger Stadium at 8.15. Ricky will have the lineups at 9 o'clock. Zach Thompson will be opposed by Bobby Miller, and we hope you'll join us. The Dodgers won yesterday 7-1. Thank you, John. We'll have that Cardinals game on the air tonight. Pre-game at 8.15, first pitch at 9.20 from Los Angeles. The Blues had a strong third period to come away with a 5-3 win at home over Calgary last night. Here's Alex Ferrario with the Blues recap. Last night, the Blues returned to action in their push for the playoffs in the Western Conference. They took on the Calgary Flames in the first period. It would be Zach Bolduc that picked up the first goal for the Blues, the second of the season for the youngster. But Calgary would tie things up a little less than two minutes later, 1-1 
Calgary, and before the period would end, they'd capitalized on a power play where the Blues were down by a goal. Then early in the second period, Nathan Walker dropped the gloves with Joel Hanley of the Calgary Flames, and eight seconds later, Jake Neighbors scored to tie things up. Then Pavel Buchnevich would score it on the power play, but before the second period would end, the Flames would get one back to even it up at three. Then two minutes and four seconds into the third period, Brandon Saad would score the 24th goal of the season for him, and then Pavel Buchnevich would cap it off with an empty netter as the Blues take down the Flames 5-3. to three. Also in this one, Jordan Bennington stopping 23 of 26 shots and picking up two assists. First goalie since Curtis Joseph in 93 to have two assists in the game. Blues back at it on Saturday against the Sharks. 7 o'clock puck drop, 6.30 pregame skate on the St. Louis Blues Radio Network. Thanks, Alex. We'll have that Blues game on Saturday night on 1560 AM. Looking at the college scoreboard from Thursday, number nine Vanderbilt rode a shutout pitching effort to a 3-1 decision over Missouri baseball in the opening contest of the two clubs' three-game Southeastern Conference Series Thursday evening at Vanderbilt. Second-ranked Central Missouri Mules baseball hit six home runs on its way to a 20-10 victory over the Newman Jets in the first of a three-game MIAA series. East Central Baseball dropped a doubleheader at North Central Missouri College on Thursday, losing 2-0 and 8-4. Emporia State Baseball dropped the next inning battle against Central Oklahoma on Thursday night as the Hornets fell 7-6 to the Broncos in game one of their series. T.J. Rocker Bomber from Herman won for four with an RBI for Emporia. Mineral Area Baseball swept a twin bill from Metropolitan Community College 11-10 and 16-8. Missouri S&T Miners set a program record for the most home runs in a single game with eight in Thursday's 25-24 loss to the Illinois Springfield Prairie Stars. Teams combined for 48 hits and 15 home runs. Tommy Reether from Washington was 2-5 for five with a solo homer, two walks and two runs for the Miners. Crowder College overcame a 7-0 deficit, scoring nine runs in the second inning on their way to an 18-7 win over St. Charles Community College yesterday. And Umsel Baseball dropped its series opener at number 21 Maryville, 14-4 in seven innings Thursday afternoon. College softball, number 12 Missouri, picked up an 11-2 run rule victory over George Mason Thursday at the George Mason Complex. ECC softball fell at MSU West Plains Thursday, 14-0 and 5-4 in a walk-off. Abreu Simmons was the losing pitcher for East Central in Game 1. Lexi Lewis from Washington, 2-2 two for two with two stolen bases for the Falcons. In Game 2, Addison Steele struck out 7 in the loss. Avery Little, 1-3 for three with a double, a run scored in an RBI. Peyton Robinson, 1-3 for three with an RBI. And Lewis was 1-2 for two with a walk, a run scored, and two stolen bases. Alexis Funkhauser from Solvin was 2 for 3 with 2 RBI in Game 1, 2 for 3 in the second game for MSU West Plains. Jefferson College softball took both games of their doubleheader with Mineral Area, 8-0 and 17-6. Number 24 Kansas dropped the first game of a three-game series against number 1 Oklahoma 6-1 last night at home. Looking at the schedule of games for today, Missouri will continue the series at Vanderbilt at 6 o'clock. Illinois State at Missouri State starting a three-game series at 6.30. Central Missouri at Newman at 2 o'clock. Hannibal LaGrange at Columbia College at 1. East Central will finish up that series at North Central Missouri with a doubleheader at noon. Emporia State at Central Oklahoma at 3. Mineral Area at Metropolitan Community College for a doubleheader at noon. Also at noon, Missouri S&T at Illinois Springfield for 2. Moberly Area Community College at Heston College for a twin bill at noon. Eureka College at Principi at 3 o'clock. St. Charles at at Crowder for a doubleheader at 1, Jefferson College at St. Louis Community College at 1. It'll be Three Rivers at State Fair for a doubleheader at noon, Umsel at Maryville a doubleheader at 1, and UHSP at William Woods at 6 o'clock. Softball, Missouri at Villanova to finish up their East Coast trip at 9 o'clock this morning. Murray State at Missouri State for two games at 1. Oklahoma at Kansas, 5 o'clock tonight. Lincoln at Northeastern State for two games at 1 o'clock. Lindenwood at Tennessee Tech, a doubleheader at noon. Missouri Baptist at Stevens College for two games at 2 o'clock. Doubleheader for Missouri S&T at Rockhurst at noon. North Central Missouri at State Fair at noon. And Central Baptist at UHSP softball for a doubleheader at 2 o'clock. Outdoor track starting today. It's the SBU Open, Evangel, Missouri S&T, Missouri Southern. The CMU invite with Font Bond, Hannibal LaGrange, and William Woods. The Washington University Distance Carnival, Font Bond, Maryville, Mineral Area, Missouri Baptist, and Missouri S&T are at that, along with Missouri Southern, State Fair, Truman State, and Washburn. 
Also, the Joey Haynes Invitational and SEMO continues today. The Raleigh Relays and Texas Relays for St. Louis University and the uh, Dutch Invitational at Central College in Iowa for Truman State. In college golf today and tomorrow, Fontbonne takes on Olivet at Kankakee Elks Golf Course. In the local scoreboard from last night, Sullivan uh, picked up a game against Eldon going on the road, coming up on the short end of a 6-1 decision in the varsity game. Sullivan JV beat Eldon 6-3. Herman taking both games from Silex, 13-3 in varsity, 2-1 in JV. New Haven picked up a win over Wellsville, 14-0. Bell down Dixon, 6-4. Francis Howell JV defeating Washington 4-1. Washington freshman defeated St. Charles West, 14-9. And it was Owensville C team down Waynesville 14 to 8. Girls soccer, Sullivan with a sweep last night. They beat North County 4 0 in varsity and 5 0 in JV. They played one half of JV last night. Borgia over Fallon Christian 3 1 in a varsity matchup. Owensville blanks Dixon 8 0 in Pacific over Valley Park 8 0. Liberty defeating Washington 3 0 in varsity 5 1 in JV. In spring softball, Conway on top of Bourbon last night 8 2. High school track from the Lynn Invitational. Local teams in the girls' standings. Herman was third, Cuba eighth, Steelville eleventh, St. James twelfth, and Bell was thirteenth. On the boys' side, Steelville finishing fifth, Herman seventh, and Cuba tenth. Some of the top finishers in the girls' 100-meter dash, Ashlyn Hughes from Herman was second. In the 200, Riley Manus from Cuba was second. In the 400, Avery Campbell from St. James fifth, and Erica Schutt from Herman it was eighth. In the girls' 800, Keeley Lane from Herman was third. Kaylee Fulham from Cuba was fifth. Girls' 1600, Amelia Uthlot from Herman, fifth. Vanessa Perone of St. James was seventh. In the girls' 3200 meters, Catherine Strackeljohn from St. James was second. Cadence Basham from Cuba was third. Jocelyn Neal from Herman, fourth. And Tajel McDaniel from Bell was seventh. In the girls' 100-meter hurdles, Abby Kreitner from Steelville was seventh. She finished fourth in the girls' 300 hurdles. 4x100 relay, Herman 1st, Steelville 5th. In the 4x2, Steelville was 3rd, Herman 4th. In the 4x400, Herman 1st, Cuba 6th, and Steelville 8th. And the 4x800, Cuba 2nd, Steelville 4th, Herman was 6th. In the girls' high jump, Hannah Turnbow from Steelville 4th, Jillian Frederick from Herman was 8th. In the pole vault, Ashlyn Hughes from Herman was 5th. Alex Hughes from St. James was 8th in the long jump. Allie Bush, fourth from Herman, and Alex Hughes, eighth from St. James in the girls' triple jump. Shannon Black from Cuba, fifth in the shot put. Aubrey Rembert from Bell, first in the discus. Molly Bailey from Steelville was seventh. Shannon Black from Cuba was eighth. Aubrey Rembert from Bell, first in the javelin. Karen Gooden from St. James was second. On the boys' side, in the 100-meter dash, Micah Volner from Cuba was seventh. He was eighth in the 200 meters and seventh in the 400. In the boys' 1,600-meter run, Nolan Kopp from Herman was second. Tandon Baker from Cuba was eighth. In the 3,200, Nathan Menke from Herman was eighth. In the boys' 110-meter hurdles, Gage Harris of Steelville was second. Noah Halbert from Cuba was seventh. In the 300 meters, Landon Rutledge from Steelville was fourth. Noah Halbert from Cuba was fifth. 4 by 100 meter relay, Herman fourth, Steelville eighth. 4 by 200, Steelville fourth, Herman eighth. In the 4 by 400 meter relay, Herman 6, Cuba 7th. In the 4 by 800, Steelville was 4th. Boys high jump, Cameron Brown of Steelville was 1st, John Hyde of Herman 3rd. Brown was also 1st in the boys long jump. In the triple jump, Boston Setzer from Steelville was 5th. Boys shot put, Zane Brown of Cuba 4th. Carter Eppel from Herman 6th. Aiden Redkowski from Steelville was 8th. In the discus, Carter Eppel was 5th. And in the javelin, Caden Humphrey from Herman was 7th. Middle school track yesterday at the Bourbon Invitational. Sullivan girls were first, followed by Steelville in second, Cuba third. Bland was fifth, Owensville sixth, Bourbon was eighth. On the boys' side, Sullivan finishing first, Owensville was third, Bland fourth, Cuba fifth, Bourbon seventh, and Steelville was eighth. Top finishers, uh, girls' long jump, Justice Evard from Cuba. And the boys' long jump, Blaze Faye from Cuba. Boys' triple jump, Blake Tolliver from Sullivan. In the girls' discus, Jersey Bright from Cuba was first. Girls shot put, Peyton Bray of Sullivan first. In the boys shot put, John Vandegriff of Cuba took first. Girls 4x800 meter relay, Sullivan 1, Owensville 2. Boys 4x800, Sullivan 1, Bland 2, Bourbon was 4. Girls 100 hurdles, Chloe Grief from Sullivan was first and Riley Rulo from Sullivan was second. In the boys 100 hurdles, Ryan Evans from Owensville first, Blaze Faye from Cuba was second. Girls 100 meter dash, Justice Savard from Cuba was first, Tegan Pullman from Sullivan second. 
Boys 100. Blaze Fay of Cuba was second. Blake Tolliver of Sullivan third. Girls 4x200, Sullivan 1st, Owensville 4th. Boys 4x2, Owensville 1st, Sullivan 2nd. Girls 1600 meter run, Karina Broniger from Sullivan 1st. Adelaide Perkins from Steelville was 2nd. In the boys 1600, Colton Hazelwood of Bland was 2nd. Jackson Prater of Bland was 4th. Girls 4x100, Sullivan 2nd, Owensville 3rd. Boys 4x1, Owensville 2nd, and Sullivan 3rd. Girls 400-meter dash, Natalie Lansford of Bland was first. Zoe Camden from Bland was second. In the boys 400, Malachi Friedendahl from Bland was first. Carson Price of Sullivan second. Girls 800, Ella Basham from Cuba first. Abby Schluter from Steelville was second. In the boys 800, David Skaggs of Bland was first. Colin Heyman from Sullivan was second. In the girls 200, Justice Savard from Cuba was first. Ellie Crump of Sullivan second. Boys 200, Blaze Fay of Cuba second, Lucas Westbrook of Sullivan was fourth. Girls 4x4, four four, Sullivan first and Bland second. And the boys 4x4, four four, Bland first, Sullivan was second. Schedule of games for today in baseball, Cuba will be at Vienna at 4.30, North Point at Washington Varsity only at 4.30, Steelville playing in the Bismarck Tournament today and tomorrow. High school track, Sullivan, Borgia, Owensville, Pacific, St. Clair Union and others will be at the Washington Pentathlon tomorrow. Sports on the air, we have Cardinals baseball. They'll be coming away from Los Angeles, taking on the Dodgers game two of the season. 8-15 pregame, 9-20 first pitch. You'll hear it on 102.1 KTUI-FM. That's your look at sports from the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio on this Friday. Have a great weekend, everybody. This is Bobby D. Did you know that Compass Health Network provides pediatric and adult dental services? Best of all, our dental care is designed for everyone. We accept most insurance plans and Medicaid. Plus, we offer a sliding scale fee for those without insurance. From major dental procedures to gentle pediatric dentistry, we've got it all. Call 844-853-8937 or visit compasshealthnetwork.org to find a Compass Health Network dental office near you. Your journey to a better smile begins with us. Book your appointment today. Come join us at our Seidenstruger Nobi Partners Spring Open House April 5th and 6th at our Union dealership and get in the yellow seat. We have event-only specials and you can save big on our John Deere compact tractors. Take advantage of 0% financing for 84 months with zero down. Plus save up to an additional $2,500 on model year 23 compact tractors. Visit SNPartners.com for more information. Offer valid through 4-6-2024. Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. All right, it's 25 minutes away from the hour of 9 o'clock at the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio. And it's now 53 degrees. And let's see, uh, we'll get John and Mike back uh, on here. I, I want to tell you guys that uh, I don't think they're going to stay there, but the Cardinals are in last place today. I, I, what I, makes so, you think they're not going to stay there? Well, the, the, I think they'll climb their way. But um, Mickelson, he, he pitched just like he normally does the first inning. You know, he gives up. Couple, couple Michaelis, you mean? Michaelson, Michaelson, whatever his name. Michaelis. He anyway gave up uh, three, yeah, three hits, two runs. Then he pitched good in the second inning. Then he gave up a couple of home runs, and the next inning. But you know, the top four batters in that Los Angeles batting order. You well, know, they're pretty two tough. of them are MVPs, I think. Yeah. And, well, three of them, uh, first and, three. And yeah. then, and then they're, they made the All Star game team. But, and, uh, yeah. but but the problem was yesterday is the the pitcher against them threw a one hitter. Uh, yeah, he was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. only well, one guy uh, got a hit off of him yeah. three times. But yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That, can they not hit or what? So, oh, it's, it's, well, I thought it was funny. It was uh, I was going through on X, formerly known as Twitter. Uh, somebody posted a uh, a meme that had a picture of Arnado on there, and uh, thanks to the fans for all your support. And it had Cardinals eliminated from postseason play. <laughs> And a little little banner thing there. And I was like, okay, they're just, you know, they're jumping on it pretty quick. Um, but, yeah, there well, were. I tell you, it, well, it'll be interesting. Well, I mean, and, and especially if they, if the pitching continues like it did yesterday. Because that's everybody's big, yeah. you know. Oh, you know, well, he, he said, I'm going to go out and get, we're going to get three starters. Well, he just he got three starters. He just didn't get the ones everybody wanted him to get. Yeah, yeah. And then everybody's complaining, well, Jordan Montgomery was out there for a long time. He signed, like day before the season started, with the um, Arizona Diamondbacks for a uh, one-year contract for $25 million. Cardinals could have afforded that. Yeah. You know, 
Oh, I really thought they were going to. I th- I kind of thought I, as long as long as he stayed out there, Montgomery well, stayed out there. I kind of thought, well, you know what, the Cardinals might well, get him. Yeah, there was something came out though. I don't I don't think he was looking to come back here. I saw uh, multiple reports that said you know uh, there were he wasn't just overly happy. I mean, I know he talked nice last yeah. year, but you know when he when he got away was a free agent and talked to people. You know, he was kind of maybe hoping and looking for other offers. Uh, I thought for what they signed Blake Snell, what San Francisco signed yeah. him for, I'm like, phew, I'd have much rather had I'd have, I'd have taken Sonny Gray and him, him by himself over Lance Lynn and, and Kyle Gibson. Yeah. Uh, you know, and you'd have probably saved yourself some money, you know, considering what uh, anybody, San Francisco paid him. Anybody named Gibson should never pitch for the Cardinals anyway. Yeah, it's hard again. to compare. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> now you know. I mean, now again, for take your liberties with the spring training stats, uh, but he did pitch much better his last couple of spring training outings. But you know, well, so, so did Michaelis. So you know, well, so we, we quite, saw what that happened. I haven't yesterday. quite given up on him yet. But well, well, it's just yeah. But I do know they're and in they last got place. A, they've yeah. got a tough schedule the first two oh, weeks. Yeah, it God. is. Yeah, well, get, if, yeah, the first, Dodgers for four, and then what? San, San Diego, Diego or and then you three. got uh, Philadelphia at mm-hmm. home. And the uh, the Marlins, I think they, uh, they play the Marlins first, don't yeah, they? Yeah, Marlins yeah, first, home that's opener, home opener, and then yeah, home uh, opener's next. Then Thursday. the Phillies after that. So uh, you well, know, and and aren't they flying? They're playing Wednesday in San Diego, and then flying home and playing Thursday. Playing Thursday, yeah. And they're playing in the afternoon. They're playing an afternoon game on Wednesday. Then they play Thursday. And they play yeah, Thursday. And, and the, the reason they, the area. reason they do that, it's opening game, and they got Friday off. Correct, in case yeah. it rains. They do that yeah. for the rain. So yeah, a lot of a lot of places that yeah. have you know weather issues. Not Southern California. They don't no. do that out there. Uh, but even in Florida. Well, they canceled a couple they, of games yesterday. I was going to yeah, say, that they, was New it's not like they haven't had rain out in Southern California the yeah, last that's, uh, few months. Yeah, it's been a little unusual well, out there with the El Nino or La Nina it or whatever was, it is. Whenever I, we were out there, it rained the whole weekend. And, you know, Kyle and I, I did some electric work for him, and he got we, he got totally soaked. I, I kind of stayed dry. but but uh, <laughs> he, would, he did the outside part, yeah. Well, that's I what stood that was. He goes, I'm all wet. I'm going to have to go through the garage. I go, yeah, I didn't get that wet. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so we're dealing with electricity. I'm gonna stay dry. But I, to, but I told yeah. him how to do it. Anyway. Yeah. So anyway, we uh, uh, but we talked to him because Nancy's birthday was whatever the 27th was was that day for Wednesday. Ago, yeah. yeah. So yeah. anyway, I told everybody you got her something nice. Yeah, I did. Okay. So, so <laughs> I got her me. You know. Good oh, gosh. Oh. I wasn't gonna go she, there. She, she might take that back. She's yeah, one lucky. She, yeah. She's yeah. one. Yeah. One. Yeah. One. She can lucky, trade that in. One lucky woman. Yeah. But anyway, we talked to we talked to the. Uh, she was FaceTiming the family out there, and and my daughter in law had gone to SeaWorld with the kids and talked about how hot it was you know they'd been freezing to death yeah she's the type that when it's 55 60 degrees she's got on a winter coat gloves scarf hat and earth because she's raised in california yeah and that's cold to her yeah she's she's freezing yeah. well, so we, we saw that well, it must have been hot if we saw hot. that we go down to florida oh yeah you know we go down over christmas break and you know it, it's you know it does get cool down there i mean it'll it'll freeze in northern florida and you know, wintertime, but, you know, we're down in Tampa, St. Pete, yep. Clearwater area, and, you know, it'll be, it might be 55 in the morning, something like that, and uh, my wife is, a, you know, she's a, is a walker, she'll get up in the morning and walk and stuff uh, here in when she's down there, and she she get up in the morning and would take a walk around the neighborhood, and, and she might have a light jacket on or a sweatshirt, uh, but she, other people that live down there on a full-time basis yeah. are out walking their dogs or whatever. And at least it's like you said, you know, they've got the women have the long winter coats on. You know, guys got uh, uh, guys have uh, like heavy hoodies and stocking and a jacket caps. over the top of that, and the stocking caps or the, you know, the old the old Russian earmuff ones. You, you know, uh, I saw somebody wearing one of those down there. Uh, <laughs> one time we went down, it was like. 52 in the morning mm-hmm. we got up and we're going somewhere you know we're driving down the street with her with the windows down yeah. and uh you know 65 i'm in shorts yeah. uh <laughs> they're all they're like all they're all looking at you like what well, kind of a crazy person are you it's, it's cold out here and it's the same thing when i see them in the ocean i go ah they're either from michigan or canada <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah because i'm not getting in there no oh, yeah it you uh, know, the water when we were down in the caribbean last week <clears throat> it was it was cool and I really? got in. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was about. Well, it was probably eighty degrees, but it was. I don't like it when it's below eighty degrees. The water, but it yeah. was. You could get in. It was no problem. Did you but snorkel? The, 
No, I didn't. I got into my ankles a little deep, maybe into my knees. I didn't want to get wet. You're frozen to death. No, I wasn't cold at all. <laughs> his ankles were yeah, cold. It really was, yeah, my ankles. <laughs> yeah. Once your feet get my cold. Toes, man, yeah, well, my yeah. toes, man. Once my toes get cold. Once your toes get cold, the rest of your body yeah. follows. <laughs> yeah, it's a circulation thing. Uh, I told you guys before we came on uh, a little bit of sad news this morning. Lou Gossett Jr., yeah. uh, the actor, um, got a supporting actor Oscar from an officer and a gentleman also was in yeah. the uh, Roots. The miniseries died at the age of 87 a today. Lot of, a lot of people don't. That's a great movie, Officer and a Gentleman. Oh, yeah. But at the end, where they're all, and a lot of people don't know that that's what you do. The first the first, uh, the first, the first person to salute you after becoming an officer, you're supposed to pay him a dollar. Yeah. And so that's what they're doing at the end. Yeah, out of where they've got the coin. Out yeah. of respect to him, yes, they were making sure he was the first officer. Yeah, and they're all lined up, and he's saluting them, and they're handing him a dollar, and he's putting it in his pocket. And that, you know, that was yeah. what that was in, in that movie. A lot of people didn't, you know, if you've never been around the military, you might not know that. Yeah, uh, but that that's what that was because they didn't explain what it was. Right. But uh, yeah, the first person to salute you when as an when you become an officer, you're supposed to give him a, a dollar. So yeah. But anyway, great great actor and. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it but was you on, know, yeah, a lot of I, stuff. I found out one thing: we're all going to, we're all going to die. Oh yeah, well, yeah. you just found that I out. I just found that out. Yeah. I didn't realize. Your that, wife just told <laughs> you. Yeah, that. we're we're all going to. He was what eighty two? Is that what you Eighty seven. Yeah, eighty seven. Well, that was a good. Yeah, life. he had uh, a good life. Yeah, didn't uh, say no cause of death revealed at this point. So uh, yeah, it was an interesting story, and I I, I didn't print all of it out, but uh, you know, he he shared uh, on an interview. Uh, I'm trying to remember where it was, I think I, I, I kind of skipped that. But he talked about, you know, when he first moved to Hollywood in the early 60s and the racist things that he dealt with. Sure. Uh, when he went out there to make uh, the film version of A Raisin in the Sun, uh, he stayed in a cockroach infested motel because that's one of the few places that would allow black people mm -hmm. to stay. I've you stayed could, in those because that's one of yeah, the few places I could afford. Yeah, that, yeah, that, mm -hmm. that too. Uh, then he came back um, for another role in 1968, so seven years later, in the late 60s, and by this time you had some of the civil rights you know, stuff had, had happened. Um, he was booked into the Beverly Hills Hotel. Universal Studios had rented him a convertible. While he was driving back to the hotel after picking up the car, he was stopped by an L.A. County Sheriff's officer who ordered him to turn down the radio and put the car's roof up before letting him go. Minutes later, he was stopped by eight other sheriff's officers who had him lean against the car, made him open the trunk. In Hollywood? Yeah, and okay. while they called the car rental agency to clear up that it was yeah. actually... And that's after yeah. they'd already had lilies of the field and guess who's coming to dinner. And, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, they were... I mean, he wasn't yeah, involved. I, yeah. I loved his movies. Then, he, uh, then, then it says it goes on, and this is a really bad day. After dinner at the hotel, he went for a walk and was stopped a block away from the hotel by, by a police officer who told him he broke a law prohibiting walking around residential Beverly Hills after 9 p.m. <laughs> Which so people like him, know? yeah, people like him are the ones that opened yeah. it up for everybody yeah. else. So. Two other officers arrived. Gossett said he was chained to a tree and handcuffed for three hours. He was eventually freed when the original police car returned. Wow. Yeah, so that's just an example of what you know what they would go through. Uh, he well, it was, as, yeah. a, as a kid, you know, it was illegal. But as a kid, I went through the South, and I might have been ten or twelve years old, and drinking fountains. You know, oh, yeah. yeah, they were separate bathrooms. Separate. Yeah, well, I know, but they weren't supposed to be then. But they yeah. were still keeping them that yeah. way yeah. in the South. I mean, yeah. they'd already yeah, they, they'd already yeah. passed the laws. They couldn't they couldn't do it. But yeah, no, they, they still they, had them. It took a little while for it to catch <clears> on down there, so to speak. He also talked another time here in 1969. Uh, he had uh, become friends with members of the Mamas and the Papas, and they had all been invited to Sharon Tate's house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, mm. guess what? Uh, he decided he wanted to go home and shower and change clothes first. And then as he was getting ready to leave, the news reports came on TV that Manson's people had gone in the house oh, and man. murdered wow. them all. So he just missed out it's on a good that. Thing he didn't, yeah. yeah good thing he he, he the shower, would have been right? there, yeah, if he hadn't gone home. to. Yeah. So there you go, cleanliness. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let me tell you what. Uh, <laughs> you, t you mentioned the mamas and the papas. I heard a guy talk, and I can't remember his name, but he was the guy that, that, that farmed the grassroots. Yes. Uh, yeah. They, they actually were called... Uh, uh, floor 13, I think, yeah. before oh, really? that became the grassroots. And he farmed the grassroots. And he also, uh, another big act, 
that he was doing, and he went in on a Saturday morning to, to cut a record for him, and the guy goes, I got this group that just drove in from New York. He says, I want him to do my backup. He goes, ah, I don't know. He says, yeah, yeah, I think I really want him to do my backup. He says, okay, where are they? He says, well, they're sleeping in a bus out front. He says, we'll, we'll go get them. They come in, he said, they stunk, they were dirty, they looked like they'd driven all the way from New York, you know, yeah. to, the, to California. And he, he comes in and they start singing, he says, wow. They did his backup. His mom was in the papas. Mom was in the papas. So he got to be their manager, too. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, but that's how they got discovered, just because this one guy had heard him someplace. And that happens so, a lot. Oh, know. yeah. So before we get too much later into this, we we got to talk about your McMansion that you built. My McMansion? Oh. Oh, the, uh, the deer stand? Yeah. The, yeah. Yes. It is. It's, a, it's eight foot high. It's eight by eight. And it was built by two guys that didn't know what they were doing. But they got it up. The question is, is it is still it, standing? Oh, yeah. It's okay. in good shape. It's got, okay. it's got how many windows all the way around? I don't even it, know. About 17 or 18. Yeah, I, can take out, yeah. I can take out any board He's I want kidding. all the way around. I've got a mirror that I stuck to the ceiling that I can uh, look back behind me. So I can see behind me. Got a me. bed. It's good. Well, not a bed, but I've got some chairs. <laughs> and footstools. <laughs> and, and I can watch TV. Yeah. So... <laughs> we're, work, we're working on the yeah. elevator. Yeah, do you have a heater okay. and an air conditioner? Well, it's going to have a heater. Yeah. And uh, uh, I'm, I can open a window if I need the air conditioning. Yeah. But it's, yeah, I, I sit in there. My wife told me last year that, you know, if you hadn't have done that, you might have got, saw a deer. And I said, well, you know, Missouri was playing. I had to watch Missouri, and then I had to watch Kansas City on the first weekend. So, you know, that's what I do. Go up in there and sit and I've yeah, got, I'm taking the a purpose grand. Purpose is not to get a deer. No, no. Well, I I, I prefer when other people get one. Yeah. Like I took my grandson and he got one and uh, a couple of years ago and he's going with me again this year. He didn't go last year, but he's going this year. And I uh, told Mike that he needs to go and then Mike can get a deer. So I'll you know, watch. So it's a, you know, it's it's. I'd a, like to have video of that. It is a nice. <laughs> it is a nice uh, deer stand. Turned I, out oh yeah. Nice. yeah. I'm sorry. It turned out pretty nice. Yeah, it did. And the fact that it stood up now for what two months is oh, it's gonna. We, it'll we be started. There. I mean, we had storms and yeah. winds. My, and, my yeah. great grandkids would be able to be in there. It's we started solid. this what either early, probably early February maybe. You know, yeah. it took us a couple of weeks, but man, we caught some good weather. I think we only yeah. worked. I think we only worked like five six days out yeah. of those two weeks, and it, and it was sunny the whole time, and it was real nice. And yeah, it's got us. It's got stairs underneath it, so they won't get slick like said, when it. We'll have an elevator rains. in for long. Yeah, and yeah, I've got. <laughs> I got a gun rack up there, a couple of chairs, because you know when I leave at late at night, I'm going to get there early in the morning. I'm just going to rack my gun, and leave it there, you know. So yeah, you, don't you tell have a lock on the door. So, so, well, uh, what door? No, there is a door. There's a door, but they're not, ah, nobody's going to get in it. Well, so, now that you've revealed your secrets well, to everybody, uh, well, they got to find it first. Oh, okay, well, uh, <laughs> yeah. I thought we was going to have to move it though. Oh, hope not. Because Chris told me, you know, I can see that from my back porch. When I build my back porch, I said, well, then just keep looking at it. Yeah. We're not moving it. <laughs> it's I, there. I don't know it's how we would. There. No. Yeah. All right. We had some issues, but we yeah. got her up. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. You know, figured it out as you went along. Well, it was going to be 10 foot. Yeah, it was going to be. Because we couldn't get it turned over. And Mike says, well, I think if we cut a couple feet off, we can get it turned over. So we did. Uh, we turned. Uh, so it's eight foot tall. Yeah. 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 Okay. But, which well, is plenty high. Oh, uh, yeah. I was, yeah. I'll get you in there. And, and eight foot boards are cheaper than 10 foot boards. Well, anyway, no, so. they were 10 foot boards. We just oh, had to yeah. make them. You had to cut them. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Birthdays today. Uh, locally, Faye Hicks, Chris Zenkowski, and Michelle Parks today. Lyle Quast. Parks. I mean, yeah, no. yeah. Lyle Quast is 63 tomorrow. Jared Dace has a birthday on Saturday. On Sunday, Delyn Martin, Keith Zankowski. Mike, Tra we're getting old. Yeah, well, Tracy Jared, Franklin. Jared's got to be uh, 60 or something, doesn't he? No, Jared's not. Uh, he may look he's it. Pauly, oh, I didn't say Pauly? that. I don't know. Yeah. Paulie's uh, probably. He's Paulie's age. They played put. They played ball together. Yeah, that's yeah. why I was going to say how old Mike and I are, because we saw Jared playing football and basketball. Yep. Yeah. So, well, so did in I. High, in high school. <laughs> so did so, I. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tony Shaw also has a birthday on Sunday. Mike and or Matt and Shelley Tolliver have an anniversary number thirty-four on oh, Sunday. Oh, so. I remember when they got married. Thirty-four. Yeah, so uh, they, that's our local. She's folks. she is the, uh, the principal, principal at the at the St. Anthony School. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. So. Um, and she'll be maybe next week. I think she comes in. She'll come in and visit. I with think us. it's been growing some. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think there. it has been. So, okay. Mm -hmm. um, here we have a man in Poland. 
who was tossed in jail for one night after no, you can't he, you can't tell Polish not, jokes it's anymore. No, it's, well, it's, it's just it's not, not right. It's, gr- it's a news story from Poland. My daughter told me you can't tell yeah, those see, kind of jokes anymore. Yeah, see, we can get away anymore. with that. Yeah. yeah, it's a news story from Poland. Frank's gone, so it doesn't matter. Well, that's true. Yeah. tell him on him. Okay. A man in Poland was tossed in jail for one night after he shot a slow-flushing toilet. <laughs> well, you're getting close, Bobby, to that yeah. joke you're not yeah. supposed to tell anymore. <laughs> it's a news story. Uh, the man opened fire on the toilet when it wouldn't flush fast enough. His landlord said it was the second time the man had shot his toilet, though the first time he only grazed it. I was going to say he missed it the first time. <laughs> Police came and arrested. Was there alcohol involved? Uh, you know, I was just getting to that. Oh. Yeah, police did come and arrest the toilet shooter who was drunk at the time. Uh-huh. Okay, now how how close was he, and how do you miss graze a toilet from, I would imagine, just a couple of feet away? I don't know, but i got to tell you guys, speaking <laughs> oh, of, speaking of okay. toilets. Oh, no. Do we, uh, so I, I turn, I, yeah, should get, I turn get, these yeah, off? Get I'm ready. Gonna, <laughs> so far this week, we've caught. I told you I had a mouse problem. Yeah. They came in when we went to California for three days. They said, well, you were gone. Move. I know. They're squatters. Yeah, they were squatters. They're squatters. <laughs> so we've caught, I think, three, and I thought we got the last one. And then yesterday morning, I heard one. This Uh-oh. morning, I'm sitting there on the toilet, and right coming around the corner, and looks up at me. And <laughs> I was getting ready to stomp him, and he, he took s- off. He said, Oh, it's being used. I'll be back later, right? <laughs> yeah. I thought. So oh, I had to break. Sorry, I didn't see the sound yeah. of the door. So this morning, I had to break that news to my wife. <laughs> We didn't get them all. There's <laughs> one pretty big one left. Yeah. So, it's, uh, boy, they're hard to get. Uh, yeah. Once yeah. you get a few of them in there, it's just like rabbits. <laughs> you know. <they're, laughs> we were in a in a store, and I'm not going to mention any names, but it was a pretty big uh, chain store down in Florida. And we're walking down the aisle. and So I'm going uh, Costco, Walmart, uh, uh, Lowe's, Sam's Club, uh, Home uh, Depot, uh, Piggly. No. Uh, we, we uh, a mentioned drug it. Publix. store. So, oh, oh, okay. so anyway, uh, we're walking down the aisle. And I, I looked down the aisle. My wife looked down the aisle. And we saw this cat go in underneath the um, uh, one of the um, yeah. shelves and on the floor. And I looked at her, and she looked at me, and she says, what was that? And I says, it's a mouse. well, it was big enough to be a cat. It's a mouse. But it was, it was a rat. I oh, mean, was it oh, really? Oh, it was huge. I'm, oh, I'm not, I'm yeah, not they, kidding you. They've it got was, him. They've got it him. was almost the size of a of a he, small cat. You know what happened to Norm? He's, he, his, his nephew, They wanted he wanted some cats, and Norm says, as long as they're all uh, males. I don't want anything in here that's not males. Because he didn't want a bunch of cats. Oh, well, yeah. that's true. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. thirty-five cats later. Yeah. <laughs> after that male, that male had kittens several times. <laughs> you walk in the Norm's hey, barn. Mistakes now, happen. Now, Mar- now Norm doesn't have any mice or anything in that barn. Well, there's but, your, there's your But solution. he's got plenty of cats. Go get I, some I, I told cats. him. Yeah. yeah. I told him just oh. get a cat. They'll mm. take care of it. Get a, ma- I, get a. You have to get a mouser though. Just yeah. getting a cat. Doesn't if, always if solve I, your problem. If I go get one of Norm's wild cats and turn it loose in my house, and I won't even have to see it. Yeah. Just lay some food out once in a while. It'll get the mice. Maybe yeah. I should do that. Yeah, yeah. there you go. That's a, a good idea. All right. A uh, few other birthdays of uh, famous or relatively famous people. John Tyler was the 10th president of the United States, mm-hmm. serving from 1841. He's, a, he's not around anymore. Is he? I don't think so. Uh, I voted for him, but yeah, I didn't really. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, well, probably because Bob told you to. Uh, 1841 to 1845. After briefly holding office as the 10th vice president in 1841, he was elected in 1840 with William Henry Harrison, who died 31 days after assuming office. So Tyler jumped up and finished out the rest of his term. And then uh, the rest of the Whig party didn't like him very much. No. And so they made sure he didn't win yeah. again. Yeah. Uh, and, and anything. I mean, his political career was oh, over. Wasn't it Tyler something in Tippy Canoe? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tippy Canoe and Tyler, too. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Uh, baseball pitching legend Cy Young was born on this date in 1867. Of course, the Cy Young Award sure. is uh, created uh, one year after his death uh, in 1956. Honors the best pitcher in each oh, league. Oh, oh, I got a question for you now. Okay. Since you brought up baseball, I looked it up. Do you know where Cannon Corn came from? When he catches Mike a can Shannon of corn. Mike Shannon said it. When he catches a can of corn. No, I they used it yesterday. Uh, uh, yeah. Chip, Chip used it yesterday. Chip, yeah. Well, I, I said, wonder where that came from. And my wife goes, you look everything else up. Why don't you look that up? So I did. Of course. And I, I looked it up. And in the old days, when a guy worked at a, a little grocery, country grocery stores, they would put all the vegetables as high as they could reach because they needed room. Okay. And they had this stick. And... They would take this stick and knock it off the top shelf, and they would catch it in their apron. 
and that's where it came. That's where I'll be darned. It's oh. catching like so a So how can, did that get into baseball? It's a, well, it's just everybody used it. Oh, well, it's probably some baseball players worked at the grocery well, store you know, in the off season. They probably did. Yeah, yeah they may yeah, have. Said, they had to. I said, need a can of corn, need to catch a can of corn. So that's, that's how it started okay. in baseball. Well, and I was glad to learn that. That's now, something. So, now something we've educated everybody. Something you know today you didn't know yesterday. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Uh, let's see. Walmart founder Sam Walton. Born in 1918. Yeah, I went to Sam's store in Arkansas. That was one of our yeah. trips. The original. Sam's. Down in uh, Rogers, Arkansas. The guy The guy drove an old pickup truck that oh, was yeah. 15 years old. Yeah. They had they had what was in his billfold on the dash of the truck inside the store. Yeah. He had the dog boxes in the back still where he hauled his dogs because he went hunting all the time. He never yeah. did turn into anything but just. Now his family's kind of got it whoopty whoops, but he, yeah. did, he yeah. didn't. Yeah. The family's net worth, oh, yeah. uh, yeah. as of January 2022, was 240.6 billion. Oh, and you know we dollars. were we were kind of in a recession then. It's probably a lot yeah, more, yeah, more. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, actor Eric Idle from the Monty Python group. Yeah. Okay. yeah he's 81 today. Uh, he was also in. Uh, let's see. Uh, Shrek the Third, Ella Enchanted, Casper. Nuns on the Run, Baron, uh, Baron Munchausen. They, they, of course, did Monty Python and the Holy Grail, The Life of Brian and the Meaning of Life. Uh, let's see, um, Clyde Frazier, basketball player, played for the uh, Knicks, won two championships there. He's 79. Uh, let's see who else we got here. Uh, you remember Karen Ann Quinlan? Yes. Yeah. She was in the coma for a Yeah, the right yeah. to die. She mm -hmm. fell yeah. into a irreversible coma in 54. She's in it forever. Uh, yeah, yeah. She, uh, that's, it's her birthday today. Uh, Earl Campbell, the football oh, player, yeah, 69, football, yeah. played for the Oilers and the Saints, played football at Texas, was a Heisman Trophy winner. Uh, Chris Lawford, the son of uh, Peter Lawford, Peter Lawford um, was, of course, he's, related to the Kennedys. He's half Kennedy. Yeah, yeah he's part Kennedy. He's uh, celebrating his birthday today. did a little acting here and there, uh, and when he uh, got, you know, he had drug and alcohol problems. He's a all, Kennedy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah that kind of runs in the family. <laughs> uh, do you, you guys remember Terry Jacks? Oh, singer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, what uh, hit wonder? Uh, yeah. Um, season in the sun. Season in the sun. Yes. I, I had it in tip of yep, my tongue. Yep. Uh, he was. Uh, he's born in this state in 1956. Uh, let's see. Um, El McPherson, the model, is 60 today. Five cover appearances on the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue, and Lucy Lawless, Mark's Zena Lawless. Warrior Princess, is yep. 56 today. Well. Guys, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, All right. Well, hopefully Sam will be back next week. So well, it, it will. Uh, you we'll need us. Kind of plan on you guys on Tuesday if you're available, okay. and if something changes, we'll let you know. All right. We'll, we'll be here Tuesday. All right. Thanks, guys. This is KTUI 1560 AM Sullivan, Missouri. You can get the morning show on uh, YouTube and on TuneIn. Coming up, we've got news from ABC. I'll do a for sale show, and then we'll look at some community notes after that. It is nine o'clock. Here is news from USA Radio Network. USA News, I'm Ryan Daniels. Presidential politics taking center stage this good Friday morning. Donald Trump commenting briefly on the road ahead for the wife and young child of slain New York City police officer Jonathan Diller. They're devastated. They've got a tough road. It's going to be a very tough road. Trump paid respects at the family wake on Thursday in New York. The 31-year-old NYPD officer was shot by a suspect during a routine traffic stop in Queens on Monday. Trump said he's an advocate for law and order. President Biden's being criticized by Republicans for attending a fundraiser in New York. Meanwhile, Biden and First Lady Jill Biden offering their condolences to victims in the wake of a stabbing spree that happened in Illinois this week. A State Department official stepping down to protest U.S. support of Israel. This week, Anel Shaleen announced her resignation from her position with the Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights and Labor. She said she could no longer work for the administration as, she says... It has enabled Israeli atrocities in Gaza. The president of Ukraine urging Congress to deliver critical aid to Kyiv in its war with Russia. President Zelensky briefed House Speaker Mike Johnson on the battlefield situation on Thursday, warning of Ukraine's dwindling resources and Russia's advances. He said quick passage of aid by Congress is vital. The Senate last month passed a bipartisan national security measure that includes funds for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan, although the House has yet to take it up. The wealthiest 1% of Americans are now worth around $44 trillion in combined stock and asset value 
value between them all. Roughly 300,000 of America's wealthiest households have been collecting trillions in additional income the last several years, too. Along with inflation since 2020, their wealth has increased by roughly $15 trillion. This is USA News. The inventor and CEO of MyPillow is always looking for ways to solve everyday problems. Have you ever picked up a towel set because it felt really soft in the store, but then when you go to use it, it's not very absorbent? It's basically a towel that's leaving you out to dry. That's why MyPillow has developed the MyPillow towels. Towels that work. I know, it's mind-blowing. Towels that actually dry you. The six-piece towel set includes two bath towels, two hand towels, and two washcloths. They come in a variety of colors, and right now you can receive a six-piece set for only $39.98 with promo code USA. Go to MyPillow.com right now and click on the radio listener special. MyPillow products come with a 10-year warranty and they have a 60-day money-back guarantee. To receive this amazing offer on the six-piece set of MyPillow towels, just go to MyPillow.com. Click on the radio listener special and enter promo code USA or call 800-951-8175. That's MyPillow.com, promo code USA. A federal judge Thursday sentencing Sam Bankman freed to 25 years in prison for his leading role in one of the biggest financial scandals in American history, capping the stunning fall of the former cryptocurrency magnate and one-time Washington megadonor. The judge handing down the sentence almost five months after a jury found Bankman freed guilty of orchestrating a massive fraud scheme centered on his crypto empire, Bankman freed faced a maximum 110 years in prison. Texas Republican Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick says the Biden administration is turning its back on the Lone Star State and on Americans. He points to the current status of immigration at the U.S. southern border. People are dying. Texas citizens are dying, whether it's from fentanyl or an illegal drunk driver or a killer or a gang member. People are dying in this country. Patrick also spoke in favor of the new state law in Texas, SB4, which would allow state and local officers to arrest those suspected of entering the country illegally. Russia has blocked a United Nations panel of experts from overseeing North Korea's new nuclear weapons program. Thursday, Russia vetoed the annual renewal of sanctions monitoring on North Korea. State Department spokesman Matthew Miller described this move as indicative of increased cooperation between Russia and North Korea. U.S. officials have raised concerns, alleging North Korea is providing weapons to Russia in its war with Ukraine. I'm Ryan Daniels, USA News. Do you have a story to tell? Bring your story to life with audiobooks. Great stories deserve great storytelling. Audiobook Network provides professional voice actors and full production services for every author's manuscript. From narration, production, and editing to distribution, promotion, and sales, Audiobook Network handles everything. If you have a print book, ebook, or even a manuscript, call Audiobook Network now and get our free audiobook guide. 800 734 1229. 800 734 1229. From the KTUY Weatherbug Weather Center for this morning, a clear sky, a sunny, breezy day today. The high temperature is 74, winds gusting to 30 miles per hour. Partly cloudy and breezy with an isolated shower tonight, low 54, winds gusting to 30 miles per hour. Partly sunny skies Saturday, the high 74. Partly sunny Sunday, maybe a shower or thunderstorm, the high 80. Monday is going to be a cloudy to partly sunny day, showers likely and maybe a thunderstorm. For KTUI, I'm meteorologist Jim Rinaldi. Thank you very much, Jim. It is currently 55 degrees with sunny skies at the studios of KTUI uh, here in Sullivan, the Bank of uh, Sullivan Bank Studios. I'll get that right. Uh, And uh, we'll see at the airport, 53 is what the current temperature is out at Sullivan Regional Airport, 55 here. Time now for the for sale show. Uh, If you're watching on YouTube, the numbers there are on the screen. You can call uh, 468-5101. Uh, is the main line, or you can uh, text if you if you don't want to go on the air, you can send us a text at five seven three six seven seven one thousand one. Just type in what it is you have for sale, brief description, uh, price if you want to include that, phone number or contact information. Uh, you can text us. I've got that pulled up right now, um, and uh, you can send me a text, and it'll come right up. We'll get it on the air, uh, or you can uh, email us for sale at ktui dot com. Uh, Again, that's either the number four or F-O-R. You can do either one. Uh, Mail it to us. You can drop it off here. P.O. Box 99, Sullivan, Missouri, 
Just put For Sale Show Care of KTUI Radio, P.O. Box 99. Uh, or you can drop it off here at our studios, uh, the Sullivan Bank Studios on North Elmont, uh, 900 North Elmont, right across from the First Assembly of God Church. Uh, drop it off during regular hours and uh, several different ways. Again, you can get that to us, and we'll get it on the air. Uh, we'll start things off here. I have someone that dropped off a, a note uh, with the items that they have available. Uh, they have uh, an Earthway Precision Garden Cedar with six seed plates. Now, that come in handy this time of year. A lot of folks are starting to get the gardens going. Uh, it's in good condition. They want $50 for it. And they also have a <clears throat> excuse me, a, tw- a commercial 12-inch blade uh, Burkel U.S. Meat Slicer, or Burkel. Um, and that's two hundred dollars. So it's a commercial twelve-inch blade Burkell U.S. meat slicer for two hundred, and an Earthway Precision Garden Cedar with six seed plates in good condition for fifty. Five seven three six two seven three three one seven. Five seven three six two seven three three one seven. Uh, see, gentleman has a Black and Decker seven and a quarter inch circular saw for sale. You can call him at 636-234-6213, 636-234-6213. And again, our number is 573-468-5101, or you can text me at 573-677-1001. And let's see, a lady has uh, she's got a combination pull and pull saw, and we need her for sale we need her part has uh, never been used, as a matter of fact. And $35 for the combo there. And um, 573 468 uh, 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 573-468-8756. What? Okay. All right. And uh, let's see. And good morning. You're on the For Sale Show. Good morning. I have a large collection of porcelain and colored glass I'm selling. My number is 573-259-9448. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. That's all you got to do. Give us a call, 468-5101. We'll put you through and get you up on the air. Again, that gentleman has a large collection of porcelain and colored glass, 573-259-9448. Two five nine nine four four eight. Uh, he uh, he'd called in. Uh, I don't know if it was into last week or first of this week. Uh, I believe he also had a Yamaha sixteen hundred silver edition motorcycle. Probably should ask him if he still had that. Um, it had lots of options and extras on it. It was always garaged, oil changed regularly, new tires on it. It's one owner. Again, that same number five seven three two five nine nine four four eight. And let's see uh, the. Uh, Lady that had the uh, Poland pole saw and uh, weed eater also had a couple of Cracker Barrel wooden rockers in like new condition, sixty-five dollars each or two for one twenty. And again, that number five seven three four six eight eight seven five six. And again, I'm just uh, trying to see here. Uh, make see um, uh, if anything uh, uh, was available. Um, Got rid of that. I think that's uh, okay. Nope. I believe I've got all the latest. So, uh, as far as uh, what's been sold and all that stuff, uh, some other items that I have available here. Uh, some folks looking for a 4K video camera it needs to be audio capable. Five seven three two zero five zero three two eight. Uh, let's see, uh, Ron Laird said he sold the recumbent bike, but he still has the recumbent Nordic track for 150 a Green Mountain Smoker for 300 Ron's number is 636-485-5824, 636-485-5824. And let's see, lady that does some home health care and uh, has eggs for sale, she's also looking for egg cartons and coffee cans. Her number is 573-617-9109, 573-617-9109. Have a three-quarter ton Chevy Extended Cab pickup. It's a 2004 model, and that is for sale. 
314-630-9468. Sewing machine for sale, and the number there is 636-575-4258. 636-575-4258. And we have someone here that has a uh, Suzuki winch. Uh, you put like on a you know ATV or four wheeler or something like that, um, and then they also have some pink camo to sell, and they're looking for a Flintstone cookie jar, five seven three seven six four 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 three five, five seven three seven six four 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 three five, and the twenty nine foot uh, holiday fifth wheel travel trailer. It's a two thousand five model. Has a sixteen foot slide. Has good tires, well maintained. 636 584 5060 or 636 629 1268. And that will do it for the for sale show today. And uh, appreciate the caller. And again, if you have items that you would like to have on the for sale show, all you have to do is give us a call. And again, uh, send us a text at uh, 573 677 1001. You can email. Uh, the uh, for sale show at ktui.com, either number four or the the letters F O R. Uh, you can mail it for sale show care of KTUI Radio, P.O. Box 99, Salva, Missouri 63080, or you can drop it off at our studios at 900 Elmont Road in Sullivan, across from the First Assembly of God Church, and you can do that during regular business hours Monday through Friday. All right, uh, we'll hear from the folks at jerry's tv sales and service and then i'll be back we'll take a look at some community notes upgrade your laundry room style and function with a whirlpool large capacity front load laundry pair clean regular size loads fast with a quick wash cycle and get on with your day in the dryer the wrinkle shield option helps keep wrinkles from setting in when you can't unload right away for mattresses furniture flooring and appliances see the folks at jerry's tv and home furnishings at 375 west springfield in sullivan or call 468-4300 all right uh, some things are going on around the area i talked about some of these in the news uh, there is a bake sale being sponsored by the missouri baptist sullivan hospital auxiliary uh, they're doing that as a fundraiser today, and it's underway right now. We'll go till 2 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, the tables are set up out near the outpatient entrance at the hospital, cash or credit only. Let them help you with your Easter desserts and treats. So looking for something sweet for the family uh, for Easter, head on out and help out the hospital auxiliary. Serve Pro of Franklin County is sponsoring an American Red Cross blood drive today. It'll be uh, over in Union, uh, the training room at number two Truman Court in Union, and that will run from one until five today. You can go to redcrossblood.org, enter ServPro, S-E-R-V-P-R-O, and use that to schedule an appointment. Uh, anybody that gives blood between now and the 7th of April uh, will be put into a drawing for an exclusive Godzilla vs. Kong The New Empire shirt uh, and then of course red cross is on the back of it uh, there's a limited quantity of those so you want to make sure you get registered it's the uh, chief mason griffith second annual easter parade in rosebud coming up this evening sponsored by the rosebud community park association and the rosebud police department the parade uh, will form up at the uh, rosebud rv park at 4 30 that's when they'll start line up and facing Rosebud Avenue, they've got a route the, through town there. Some streets will be blocked off, so be aware of that. Parade will start promptly at 5.30. Bring your group's decorated vehicles, floats, the UTVs, first responder vehicles, and join in the fun. Please bring your own candy to throw and no plastic eggs, please. Uh, they'll have a candy cannon at the end of the parade there in the uh, community park at 6.30. Uh, make sure the kids... Uh, Take their Easter baskets or buckets or whatever and get ready to load up on some candy from the parade. And while this is all going on, they'll have their famous park fish fry going on from 4 until 7 o'clock. And they are accepting donations for the event. So that's coming up tonight. Some Easter services uh, that I have uh, information about. New Testament Baptist Church is having their Good Friday service tonight at 7 o'clock. And they have a choir presentation called Glorious Day, and that'll be Sunday morning at 10. 
and an Easter egg hunt for the little ones following the choir presentation. They would like you to register your kids for the egg hunt if you're going to be there. Just go to ntbcsullivan.com. That's New Testament Baptist Church, ntbcsullivan.com. Register your kids for the egg hunt on Sunday. Church is located at 962 North Church Street. And the phone number there, if you need more information, is 573-468-3334. Temple Baptist Church is having a Good Friday worship service tonight at 7 o'clock, and all are invited out for that. Here's an after-dark Easter egg hunt for adults, and that will be tonight. It will be at Victorian Place of Cuba, and this is being sponsored by them, uh, raising money for the longest day, which uh, raises funds and awareness for the care, support, and research efforts of the Alzheimer's Foundation. Now, what you can do, uh, in exchange for a donation the longest day, food and drinks are provided. Uh, you must make a donation to get the food and drinks. They'll start serving that at 6 o'clock, and the egg hunt will begin immediately after dark at about 7.30 or so. So bring your flashlights, headlamps, or phones. Make sure they're all charged, and uh, join them. That should be a lot of fun tonight. Uh, the First Assembly of God Church, we mentioned right across uh, Elmont from us here, having their Easter egg hunt on Saturday at 12 noon. And um, they'll get out there and get after early on Saturday getting ready. They'll have three different age groups, up to three years of age, four to seven-year-olds and eight to 11-year-olds. And they do each group in five-minute intervals. It doesn't take long. They've got around 10,000 Easter eggs they're going to put out for this. They're also going to have nachos, popcorn, candy, uh, prizes, an obstacle course, bounce house. Sounds like a lot of fun. And again, the church is located at 951 Elmont Road in Sullivan, right across from us. 573-468-8835 if you need more info. Uh, folks down toward the St. James area, the uh, St. James Sports Club is sponsoring their annual Easter egg hunt in the fields around the sports club building in Nelson Hart Park. Uh, public is invited. The Easter Bunny is going to be there to get pictures taken. And uh, they'll be there from uh, probably around noon until the egg hunt is over shortly after 1 o'clock. Now, the egg hunt is spread out over several fields. Each age group has their own staked-off area that they'll hunt in. They'll have age groups up to 2 years of age, 3- and 4-year-olds, 5- and 6-year-olds, 7- and 8, 9- and 10, and 11- and 12. Several thousand eggs will be out for the uh, youngsters to find. Most of them have candy in them. Uh, there are some slips of paper that uh, tell you you've won a special prize. Some of the eggs will have some money in there, maybe a few quarters, half dollars, something like that. Uh, so anyway, the hunt will start at 1 o'clock sharp. Uh, parents need to get there a little early to find out where their age group is. Uh, get your picture taken with the Easter Bunny. Uh, it will start promptly at 1 o'clock. They'll set the horn off. It only usually takes two or three minutes for it to get done. So make sure you're there early. Uh, if you get there five after, you're probably going to be out of luck. Uh, should be a good day for it on Saturday. That will be in Nelson Hart Park there in St. James. Uh, community Easter Sunrise Service coming up on Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Hosted by the Beth Presbyterian Church, which is located at the corner of 4th and Pine in Gerald. Everyone is welcome. It's the Easter weekend celebration in Merrimack Caverns being put on by the Lester family. Saturday night at 6 o'clock, Sunday night at 6.30. You can join the Lester family and friends as they bring to the stage of Merrimack Caverns two performances of The Crucifixion and the Resurrection in pageantry and song. All seats are free. Doors will open an hour before each performance. They do have some reserve seats if you have a group of 10 or more and would all like to sit together. Now the services are held inside the ballroom in Merrimack Caverns. The GPS address is is 1135 Highway W, Sullivan, Missouri, 63080. If you would like more information, uh, especially like the group uh, group tickets, call 314-772-3048, or you can email lstrs at aol.com, or check www.thelesters.com. And again, that's free with the exception, uh, and again, you can just come in and sit anywhere. They will have reserved seats for groups of 10 or more if you make prior arrangements. The Merrimack Community Mission has a Facebook group called the MCM Online Auction, and they will be uh, conducting an auction, the Facebook auction, of Cardinal Collectible Bobbleheads and T-Shirts. 
Now they have around 55 bobbleheads and 15 specialty t-shirts they're going to auction off. You need to go to MCM Online Auction, request to join the group, and then you can participate in the fun Facebook auction. It will start on Monday, April the 1st and run through Saturday, April the 13th at 12.01 p.m. So you want to check that out if you're looking for some Cardinal collectibles. Uh, as we look ahead just a little bit, another blood drive coming up at Owensville High School in the small gym on Wednesday, April 3rd, 8.30 a.m. until 1.30 p.m., sponsored by the OHS Student Council. Uh, you can, uh, again, go to redcrossblood.org, enter Owensville HS to schedule an appointment, or call 1-800-733-2767. And, again, you'll, you'll qualify for those shirts, too, if you get registered. I uh, just got this today. Uh, Sullivan High School senior parents and students are having a financial aid uh, award letter workshop, a financial aid award letter workshop. It'll be in the Commons at the high school at 6 p.m. on the April the 3rd. The Scholarship Foundation of St. Louis uh, is coming out to help out with this. Uh, financial aid has been a little bit strange this year, uh, so come and get all the info you can. Uh, you can email... Uh, S-O-K-E-L-A-N-D-A at SullivanEagles.org if you have any questions. That's S-O-L-K-E-L No, that's right again. S-O-K-E-L-A-N-D-A at SullivanEagles.org Probably have some information there at the school as well. They're having a Senior Expo and Health Fair coming up on April the 4th from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m at the Knights of Columbus Hall 231, Missouri 185 South in Sullivan. And it's uh, being put on by several local sponsors. A day of fun and learning. Come visit your local resources. Over 30 vendors, speakers, lots of giveaways, and a free lunch. And that is, uh, if you have any questions, call Kelly Johnston. And 314-412-2288 is the number you can reach her at. The Gracia Dye Methodist Church at 952 North Church Street in Sullivan is having a barbecue on Friday, April the 5th from 11 a.m. until 6.30 p.m. All you can eat, dine in for $15, drive through or carry out $13. Now the drive through menu choices, you can either get two brats or a pork steak, and they'll, the meal comes with potato salad, baked beans, slaw, and dessert. They also have a hot dog meal for $5, which will include a hot dog, chips, applesauce, and a brownie. And mark it down this coming up Friday, April 5th, 11 until 6.30 at Grace United Methodist Church. I mentioned this yesterday. I think uh, Jerry and Chuck are going to be in on Monday morning to talk more about this. Uh, for Gospel Hoot Nanny friends and followers, the benefit concert that had been planned for Nancy Pollard on April the 5th has been canceled due to some unforeseen circumstances. However... A Gospel Hoot Nanny concert will be held at the House of Hope Church at 235 North Clark in Sullivan. That's the old Radio Shack building. And there'll be a 7 o'clock on the 5th. A love offering will be taken, and it will be donated to House of Hope Carl Duff Ministries to help people in need. So come on out. Uh, they'll still have the Hoot Nanny. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Uh, pack the House of Hope full of love for all God's children. And again, still going to a good cause, just not the one that they had planned. And speaking of music, there's an open mic jam session in memory of Larry Laird coming up on Saturday, April 6th at the Eagle Small Hall at 5 o'clock. It's open to the public. Uh, there's no entry fee. They do have a cash bar. Uh, feel free to bring shareable snacks. There will be a memorial table set up to honor deceased Eagles members. Uh, bring a picture to display if you have any. And there's going to be uh, several local musicians. James Gruce is going to be there, among others. And uh, any and all musicians are welcome to come and join in. For more information, you can give Ron Laird a call, 636-485-5824, 636-485-5824. Sullivan Encore Music Booster presenting a music trivia night fundraiser on Saturday, April 6, 6.30 p.m. at the high school. Doors open at 6. $200 for a table of up to 10 people or $25 per person if you're under 10 and attendees must be at least 18 years of age. To register your team, you need to contact the Sullivan Encore Music Boosters. That's Encore Music Boosters at gmail.com. They would uh, prefer that you uh, get registered by uh, April the 1st. So uh, you need to get on that. They'll have music bingo, a silent auction, 
and all sorts of fun stuff, and that goes to help support the Music Boosters group and help support the music programs at Sullivan. Uh, this is a real fun time and a worthy cause. Mouse races uh, and a silent auction uh, coming up uh, at the... I'm trying to remember where this is. Um, at uh, 1329 Union Avenue in Union. Um, it'll be... Uh, to benefit Paw Stoppers, which uh, supports the local Franklin County K-9 team, it'll get started at 6 p.m. Again, that's 1329 Union Avenue in Union. Admission $10. Uh, always a lot of fun. Those mouse races are. I think they'll have uh, food and drinks and stuff available for sale, plus a silent auction, so don't miss that. Um, I don't know if you've heard of this lady or not, but Elizabeth LeCamp is putting on a tribute to the troops' Vietnam era. On April the 6th at the Bourbon Area Community Center at 575 Elm Street in Bourbon. Uh, the Tribute to the Troops group is a nonprofit organization dedicated to honoring Vietnam veterans. They'll have uh, memorabilia, a wall of honor, an interactive Vietnam map. They'll have attendance and raffle prizes, snacks, drinks, and of course camaraderie. Doors open at 1.30. The show will begin at 3 o'clock with the presentation of the colors. Advanced tickets, $15 for veterans, $20 for a non-vet. Uh, profits will go to the St. James Veterans Home, uh, the Assistance League down there. The show will sell out. No free refunds unless the show's canceled. Um, they've got a link there, Elizabeth LeCamp's tribute to the troops .com. That's for credit card or orders only. You can go by the Bourbon Cafe and Coffee Saloon. They have some tickets there, uh, check or cash only for that. If you have any questions, call Francie Rohr. And her number is 636-432-9198, 636-432-9198. Or you can go to www.entertainmentbyelizabeth.com, or uh, you can check that out on Facebook as well. And I think that's going to wrap it up. That gets us a couple of weeks, a uh, week or more ahead of time. Uh, got a lot more coming up throughout the month of April. We'll get those as we have an opportunity. Uh, appreciate uh, you listening in today. I want to remind everybody about our local birthdays. Uh, we have uh, Faye Hicks, Chris Zankowski, and Michelle Parks with birthdays today. Coming up on Saturday, Lyle Quast is going to be 63. Also, Jared Dace has a birthday on Saturday. On Sunday, it's uh, Delyn Martin, Keith Zankowski, Tracy Franklin, and Tony Shaw. Also bring birthdays, and Matt and Shelley Tolliver. We'll have anniversary number 34. Uh, let's see right now. Sunshine, nice day. Uh, not, not much of a breeze at this point anyway. Probably going to get a little windier as the day goes on. 59 degrees right now at the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio. 55 at the Sullivan Regional Airport. And that'll do it for me. Thanks for uh, being with me throughout the week. Uh, filling in for Sam. Uh, he's doing much better. And uh, whenever he uh, determines that he's ready to go, he'll be back here with us. And hopefully that's very soon. Uh, coming up on 9.30, we'll have news from the Missouri Net, and then we'll join the Mike Gallagher Show in progress. This is KTUI 1560 AM Sullivan. Have a great weekend, everybody. This is uh, Bobby D. Be back with you on Monday. With news on Missouri Net, I'm Marshall Griffin. The state Senate recently passed a bill that would expand access to private schools for students across Missouri. The main part of the bill modifies the Missouri Empowerment Accounts Program. Senate President Pro Tem Kayla Browden explains why, quote, education reform is needed. We've kind of just maintained the status quo for a really, really long time uh, and have just thrown more and more and more and more money uh, at, at uh, a system and not ever really thought a whole lot about if the system is working or not. Browden says, though, his goal is not to abolish public education. The Missouri House has passed a bill that would ban fake videos and audio messages within 90 days of an election of a candidate running for state or local office. The measure does not apply if messages include a disclaimer stating that it's been manipulated or generated by artificial intelligence. And the Eastern District of Missouri Court of Appeals plans to convene next Thursday to hear three cases at Northeast Missouri's Hannibal High School. The court sessions are open to the public. This is Missouri News.